All right, I should be live now. Just gonna check. I haven't done this in a while, so I have to check out some settings just to make sure everything's good. Um, all right, Q star. Right, it's not showing up yet, but we'll see. Oh, this is gonna be painful. This is gonna be so fucking painful. I've actually watched this a couple times already. Um, but it's really hard to get through, and I was trying to make a video on it, but I wanted to collect my thoughts. Um, I just want to see how the volume is. Let me... Old school YouTuber that was like one of the first to the market. Old school YouTuber, to... Boogie2988. Yo, what's good, everybody? All right, that's not bad. This seems like the audio is pretty good, balanced. This is going to be painful. Um, so the purpose of this live stream is to sort of just do a live reaction to this financial audit interview that Boogie2988 did and kind of collect my own thoughts because I want to do a video on it. And I just want to make sure that that video is, uh, is well done. And I, I hit on all the important things. Is, uh... And I'm going to hear <laughs> hear a little bit of echo from me. Um, I'm not going to be doing too much talking to chat or, rea or reacting to donations and stuff. I, I may, just because, you know, people deserve to uh, have themselves acknowledged. But um, this is going to be mostly a reaction to Boogie. And <laughs> it's going to be, it's not going to be too fun. All right. Uh, it should, I mean, there's plenty of cringe. There's plenty of entertainment here, but... Uh, Let's get hydrated and let's get started. All right, Boogie2988 is going to die in poverty financial audit from the channel Caleb Hammer. Um, good stuff. Good stuff from this guy. All right. Thank you so much, Andrew. All right. Let's get into it. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988, coming to love is getting to the power of the internet. I'm an old school YouTuber that was like one of the first to the market, going back all the way to... 2006 is when I started my YouTube channel. Where are you based out of these days? I'm living in Fayetteville, Arkansas, which is where okay. I've been for 25 years. Oh, I just want to give a warning. Um, I really do not like Boogie2988. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for that. You may have noticed some of my previous videos. I've touched on a lot of the reasons why. And so if it seems like I'm being mean to him, um, I do believe I have good reasons for that. And a lot of just like patience and giving the benefit of the doubt has completely worn out for me. So if this seems kind of aggressive, uh, it is. So just be prepared for that. So it makes like, so you didn't do the standard like, oh, things are starting to work in YouTube, let's move to LA, or I know that was a huge was, thing a few years ago. I was really tempted to, yeah. but as I said back at the time, I was LA poor, Arkansas rich. Now that's changed a lot because Northwest Arkansas has the University of Arkansas, go Razorbacks. We have the home offices of Walmart, and Walmart did this really smart thing where they told every business, if you want to sell at Walmart. Okay, he goes through this spiel. He's done this multiple times. I don't know exactly how it's relevant to his financial situation, but I guess Northwest Arkansas has gotten more expensive because of all the uh, businesses that are required to be there because of Walmart. You have to open an office in Northwest Arkansas. So there's like 2,000 offices, small businesses built. We're the home of Tyson Foods. So if you're eating chicken in America, you're probably spending that, sending that money back home to us. And mm. we're the home of JB Hunt, one of the largest trucking companies. And because all of those companies are there, including the Razorback games and all of this other stuff, you have the, the Walmart children, uh, the children of Sam Walton spending money on the area. It's become a really expensive area to live in, unfortunately. Yeah, well, that's the home of all that. But sadly, to be blunt, you're kind of the home of, I think, what every YouTuber fears, right? Yeah. Yeah. The decline. I think you went You went from, if I'm not mistaken, millionaire, correct? A technical I was, millionaire. I was close. I was really, really close. At one point, I had, and I mean like for two days, when yeah. I say close. For he did not have this money, by the way. Like having, so he's going to describe that he has like 750 or had $750,000 in crypto at one point in his life. If you never cash that out, you actually don't have that money. So it's just kind of weird. Um... And, uh, yeah, but we're going to continue. Sorry, my brain is already melting. Two days, I had about seven hundred and eighty, eight hundred thousand dollars in crypto. Mm -hmm. Went to bed one night, and it was worth half that when I woke up. What were you in? Uh, so here's my biggest regret. I originally invested in Ethereum, and this was mm -hmm. based on a few friends becoming Ethereum millionaires. And I had, like, an initial investment of about $200,000. I put it in, and then it fell for the first time. 
Yeah. Like 200,000 went down to like eight. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I don't really need the money right now. I'm making money. I can live off How of that. How much are you making? 10 to 15,000, I think. A month? Yeah, in a month. Right. This is so much money. Like, especially for like, yeah, he's saying that like Fayetteville, Arkansas is on the come up. It's still Arkansas and it's just a lot of money to have made per month. And uh, yeah, I don't... <sighs> It's tough with the crypto stuff. It's just, it was really stupid. Um, he's saying that everybody in his life was like advising him to continue this crypto investment. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it is just somewhat just greed driven. You know, he wanted money to turn into more money and crypto wasn't, uh, was a seemingly a way for that to happen. But, uh, once it dropped off, he should have never reinvested. But anyway, incredible. Yeah, yeah it was incredible. I mean, incredible wealth, more than you could ever hope to spend, right? Yeah. And eventually, that crypto went up to past my investment point. Um, got close. If I held on to my Ethereum right now, if I'd never needed to dip into it and I had not gambled on stupid altcoins, uh, I probably have a 1.5 million in Ethereum well, right now. Even even still, like I don't. Even, yeah. Okay, what year was that? What year was that? The initial investment happened in 2019. No, 2000. 2019. Yeah. Okay. How much did you put into Ethereum? 200,000. 200,000 in 2019. The initial lesson was in. Two okay. So now Caleb's going to do like a calculation on how much Boogie would have made if he had like invested in the S&P 500 or something like that. Some reasonable investment. The issue with this interview, and this is actually kind of a problem with me reacting to it live, is there's a lot of stuff that I just like do not care about. Um... Not that, like, it's not important. Like, obviously, from Caleb Hammer's perspective, all of this financial audit stuff is important, and his job is to educate his audience on financial stuff. Um, but I there's, like, a few, like, nitpicks in here and, like, bad habits that Boogie is in at this point of, like, lying and shifting goalposts and stuff like that. That's really what I am planning to hark on in my video about this <laughs> video, but... Right Right now we're just kind of in like the information collection stage. I'm just trying to get my thoughts clear on this. So we're going to go through the whole thing, even if some of it seems irrelevant. 2018. Okay. And, and then the first market crash. 2018. Let's yeah. say you put it at the beginning. S&P 500 was worth 271. Now it's worth 458. It would have almost doubled. Almost doubled. If I put in like traditional stocks or traditional. Just the S&P 500 just following the market in general. Yep. Yep. This, was there not a single person surrounding you? Was there not a single person just in your YouTube circle, in the family circle, who was like, dude, I had the you're opposite. making money. I had the opposite. I had people telling me, um, you should invest in crypto. Everybody I knew was Everyone investing. you knew. Every, all of my YouTuber friends, uh, McJugger Nuggets, get behind the camera, all these people. Okay. They're like, look, I've made millions from crypto. Yeah, this is just, like, brutal. Like, if it's true, get better friends. If it's not true, like, Boogie seems to kind of bring this up to be like, bro, there's nothing that I could have done. Everybody was giving me this advice. But at the same time, this was, like, a 45 to 49-year-old man when all of this stuff was happening. Like, at best, crypto was something that was new. Even if it was something that historically had never fell before, it's just a risk. And, like, even if your friends are all telling you to do something, you can't just trust that that's going to work out because they told you to, you know? Crypto. I made millions from crypto. Nobody was telling me that it was too late in the game. Nobody was telling me that I bought crypto. I brought Ethereum at thirty bucks, and now you're gonna buy it at two eighty. It wasn't even too late in the game. It's just like crypto's a gamble. Yeah, it's a straight up gamble. It's See, he gets it. He understands. I, I hardly consider it an investment versus like traditional. Okay, okay. So, I mean, not to make any excuses, but keep in mind, I didn't come for money. I'm I'm the son of a coal miner, Neither. right? And so, no one in my life was ever trying to teach me what to do with it's money true. or how to do it with money. So somebody comes along and they're like, look, I took my initial million yes. and I turned it into 20 million. You should do that too. But like, is there no like too good to be true sensor in Boogie's brain? Like, that's what I don't understand. Like, hey, I took $1 million and turned it into 20 million. Like these opportunities either do not exist or they're extremely nefarious. So like, I know everybody got like super hyped about crypto and shit and people just wanted to get in at the right time. And maybe you're trusting some friends, but it's like some common sense has to prevail, you know? That's why I'm excited about this conversation. Yeah. Usually on the show, yeah. I just meet with random people who are either part of the audience or they're off the street, and I just help them through the situations. You're an interesting case here because 
you follow the case of the professional athlete, the actor, the mm -hmm. YouTuber. Yep. Boom, lots of money comes in. We put it here, we put it there, but we just spend it, spend it, it just goes crazy, then we end up broke. It's yeah. a tradition. <laughs> this kind of happened to me, bro. Like, I can't lie. Um, you know, that's why Boogie's story is so interesting to me because there are a lot of parallels, and it happens to a lot of YouTubers, but... Uh, you know, it is what it is. Personal story, and that's why I'm so excited to have this conversation, yep. is because you just followed, you followed that path. I mean, what would you say you're worth today in total? Since you guys are so awesome. For okay, so we skip to an ad break. I'm going to skip the ad. Subscribe to Caleb Hammer. He makes good content. I'm reacting to his content right now. Um, you know, he deserves support and a lot of credit for meeting with all these people. Like, he, like, I haven't watched a ton of his stuff. He seems to give decent financial advice, but I think even more to his credit, he has really, really hard conversations with people. Like, it is not easy to sit across from somebody and tell them that they're making shit decisions. So, mad credit to him for doing that. Like, did he get rid of his Tesla? Never had one. Never had one, so that's his internet rumor. I mean, so I did... Okay, the fucking Tesla thing. This has always made me so angry. Boogie, like, he'll explain the story in his version, but basically he baited his entire audience into thinking he was going to buy a Tesla. He did put a deposit down, but then he rescinded that. I don't know if he lost the deposit or whatever. He did not end up buying a Tesla, but as we'll see from this story, it makes sense that people thought he had one because he was like going off about how he was going to buy it. I went with my friend McJuggernuggets to a Tesla dealership. Mm -hmm. He test drove, I test drove, right? Uh, he's like, I'm going to buy one. I hope you buy one. Let's look into it, getting you one. And I got this crazy idea in my head. Yeah. You know, it's showroom experience, right? I'm like, I'm going to get a Model X with the wing doors. And then I called my friend at the Celebrity Car Museum in Branson, check him out. Um, and I'm like, how much to get it out as a modern day DeLorean? Is it maybe 10, 15, maybe 20? Let's put the money into it. And I thought I'd have a cool show car, right? I don't understand this whole show car thing. So he not only wanted to buy a Tesla, but he wanted to trick it out so that it looked like a DeLorean. Like, and like, I don't know, like, I, I'm not 100% sure from his explanation. Let's keep going for a second, because I'm not sure if he gives a good explanation about how this was going to be good for him. Yeah, uh, we're coming off the back of uh, Ready Player One. The DeLorean was all the rage again. Back to the Future anniversaries uh, just happened. I'm like... This seems like a, a smart investment. Why was a it? smart investment? It is not like one cars are depreciating assets. Like they do not get unless it's like some like weird collector car situation or something like that. And you bought it way after the fact. Uh, cars do not usually appreciate in value. And he also wanted to do modifications f on it. And as anybody who's like done modifications to cars or has invested money into your car, let's say you buy a ten thousand dollar car and you put ten thousand dollars of work into it, it does not become a $20,000 car. In fact, a lot of times that custom stuff, like he's explaining here, turning a Tesla into a car that looks like a DeLorean, that's very like specific to you and your tastes. And even though like, oh, we're coming off of Ready Player One and stuff, it's like, it's not like this is going to be like something that you're going to resell for tons of money. But anyway. In the showroom. And I got home. And I put a $2,500 uh, deposit down, and I'm like crunching the numbers looking. Oh. I'll, I'll spend $50,000 today on a, a down payment. Yeah. I'll loan out the other fifty. This is a stupid decision. It would have been yeah. aggressively stupid. I'm right. so glad you didn't yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. So. I am so glad you didn't do that. That was one of the- It's good. It is very good that he did not buy this Tesla. Like, this is one thing I don't like Boogie. I don't pretend to have, like, some love or, like, oh, I'm doing this all for Boogie's benefit when I make videos about him. But I also don't just, like, want horrible things to happen to him. Like, when, when he makes good decisions with his finances, I think that's an objectively good thing. It's better if Boogie is not at risk of, like, becoming home or whatever the scariest things but that it, i thought i heard but at that point why not just play the character is right? it at that point why not just play the character so he's kind of talking here about baiting his audience into thinking that he had a tesla and this is a reoccurring problem that boogie has where he feels like why not just fuck with people you know i got all these trolls out there why not just fuck with them a little bit well one you kind of spread misinformation about yourself so people are continually confused about what the truth in your life is and two like you don't have a consistent story like you lie about things all the time so you're just like muddying the waters like worse and worse <laughs> all the time it's just really not a good idea at that point, just let the internet do what the internet's going to do, right? Just let, like, he had, like, this was a time when he was, like, really having problems with, with trolls on Reddit and other places on the internet. 
why would he want to let the internet do his thing? Like, the internet doing its thing was constantly fucking with Boogie, and uh, and it was clearly emotionally distressful to him at the time. So it was just, it was not a good idea, and to pretend like it was smart or, like, just a silly, goofy move for him to do that at the time is really just silly. Yeah, I didn't expect front page of Reddit. That was wild. And to this day, well, I mean, you should have expected that. Like, you wanted to fuck with people. You wanted to be like, oh, Boogie with the Tesla. Why wouldn't you expect that it would blow up? That's probably what he wanted to happen. He's always like, I don't know. It's still fascinating that people think I bought that car. I can't believe I thought you, you thought that. I bought that car. I thought you bought that car. And the worst part, he thought, like, this should be like a sign. Like, yeah, Boogie, people thought that you bought the car because you made it seem like you bought the fucking car. Why are you surprised? And to this day, I think it's still fascinating that people think I bought that car. I can't believe I you, you thought I bought that car. I thought you bought that car. And the worst part about it is, and anybody out there, like, if you want to buy a luxury car, buy a luxury car. I don't I don't think it's a smart decision. But if you're going to buy a luxury car, don't buy a Tesla. What's wrong with Tesla? I'm considering getting a Tesla. They're so expensive for repairs. If someone mm. dents that vehicle, it's so, they know it's a luxury This is true about, like, all luxury vehicles. I don't know if it's more true for Tesla. Maybe it is because of, like, the limited runs that they do on the cars, and maybe parts are less common or something like that, but this is true of any expensive car. Like, if you see, like, a BMW for, like, two grand on Facebook Marketplace or some shit, be careful, because it could end up costing you a lot in repairs, even though it's a cheap car car so they make sure they upcharge you every chance they get if you want to go the fastest possible speed there's a fee to unlock that it can do it it's just a software <laughs> governor they charge you to let it have the ludicrous speed like it's it's a money it's a, one of the worst money things i think you can make mm. i've routinely well, cars made in fun. general i mean unless it's like a beater that's getting you from a and b or just safety measures or room for family everything beyond that starts becoming a want that's why so luxury vehicles are okay if they're you know that's when i bought the newest car i've ever owned was this uh hybrid yeah and it had one previous owner uh, and I bought it just before all the prices went crazy, so I got it for 20 So he got pretty lucky with this hybrid that he bought. Even though, like, a guy that's in the financial position of Boogie probably should not be buying a $20,000 car anyway because, you know, there are cheaper cars out there, but I'll, I'll give it to him. Twenty cash uh, I wanted to build credit, so I put 12000 down. I loaned out the rest. You still all on it? I think maybe a thousand or two thousand. It's in the neighborhood of not very much. Okay. okay. Remember that. Oh, it was like a, a thousand or two thousand I owe on the car because that's going to come up later. That is not the amount that he owes on the car. Um, Facebook, 76 bucks comes in a month. Again, what are we doing there? We're we just posting some clips and just nothing's happening? Or? Oh, uh, no, this is Meta PC. So this is a sponsor that I have. <laughs> we get uh, 5%. All right. <laughs> yeah, we get 5% of uh, the sales that we make in a month. So some months it's low like this, 76 bucks. On a really good month, it's maybe 300. Okay, cool. So that's kind of rough. Like, all these guys that are sponsored by Meta PCs, I don't know if people have different deals with them, but they're a very popular sponsor out there, and they could be great, but the 5% commission on PCs, I mean, that's like fine commission or whatever, but I assumed with how much people talk about it that they're getting paid like a monthly amount for being a sponsored creator, but it seems like they only make the commission and nothing else. Cool. Yeah. Let's keep going through the income. Or at least Boogie does. I'm not actually going to talk about anybody else. This seems in Boogie's case that it's just the commission. There's no actual sponsored rate. Um, mm -hmm. Twitch, again, not... For some reason, I would have thought you were doing better on Twitch. And here's the thing. It's because, number one, I don't stream as often as I like. Why? Um, I get very anxious doing it. Uh, most of the bad things that I ever said, I said on Twitch, right? Yeah. And it's because I have this, to, trying to totally break character with you here. I have this- Trying to totally break character. Oh my God. I've been watching a lot of interviews with Boogie, a lot of which I've wanted to, to cover on this channel, but I've just kind of gotten lost in the sauce. Um, Boogie always has these moments of like, I'm being actually honest with you. Be genuinely, I am being truthfully honest with you. And he's doing the same thing here. Breaking character entirely. Like- like the like the person interviewing him thought that he was in character this whole time. Very Andy Kaufman as character. Also that I'm an idiot. And so I will either push the edge because I grew up on Andy Kaufman, Sam Kinison, Richard Pryor, George Carlin, um, Andrew Dice Clay. I love shock humor. I listen to shock humor still to this day. Mm -hmm. Um, and, people didn't like it when you did it. No. Yeah, yeah because you're not funny. <laughs> like he can be funny, I guess sometimes. But when Boogie goes shocking, it usually does not go well just because he's just like a 14 year old. Just like, hey, let me say the worst thing possible and then see if it makes people laugh out of pure. Just like, what the fuck was that? And they, just, they like it coming from a shock jock or a shock comedian, not the person that some people branded as the Mr. Rogers. And Judy. They, they like it coming from somebody that's funny and knows how to do it. You and also, yeah, I mean, he does make a point here that, like, he was the, the Mr. Rogers of YouTube or whatever. So it is, like, if you 
create an audience that isn't into shock humor, obviously they're not going to like it when you do shock humor. If they just see you as a wholesome guy and then you're like, I don't even want, I don't even want to give the examples that I know of what Boogie said because it's just fucking cringe. Do that. Bob Saget did it, but I know Bob Saget, right? So why we do it then? Stupidity. I, Stupidity. I hate that excuse. I it just, you know, but on top of that, uh, if you watch one of my live streams, I mention donations, subs, stuff like that, maybe once in a two-hour stream, because I'm never against the character I play, against the reputation I have. Against the character that I play. Like, he, he like, really wants to revise history and say that, like, anytime he begged for money, anytime he asked people for things, anytime he, like kind of goaded on donations that that was just a character that he was playing i feel like that's such a cop-out i don't like crowdsourcing but you refuse to get a job and you need money to survive it's less of so refusing, we have to do something it's less of refusing more that i i just don't know if i could i do have good news about that though yeah well you're not gonna have four million subscribers for long so you can get a job now <laughs> sorry buds i mean that's not something i would actually ever say you know I think he's referencing in the documentary when he was like, I'm not going to get a job. I have 4 million subscribers. And I guess he was acting in that scene or whatever. Uh, merch. People aren't really buying your merch. Yeah. It yeah. looks like my merch numbers, bro. I mean, I don't know. I'd, I'd take 20 bucks for a month, you know, for selling. I get it as well. But when, when I start seeing people on this show, especially business people, who are just so scattered in different pots. And little's coming in, little's coming in here. So it's mm -hmm. not adding up too much. Instead of again, this is what I was going to start bringing up with Twitch. Like you say, oh, I'm not really on there much, and you know things have been consequences and I'm, uh, consequences from what right. I've said, and then I'm feeling anxious about it. Then I'm just like, okay, we're done with Twitch. We're done with Twitch. Who even gets focus all in what we know can be the revenue builder of all time? Which continues to be YouTube ads. Yes, it does. This is absolutely right. the biggest number right. that we have seen here so far. Now, uh, would I be able to? They're not going to be able to see it, but would I be able to see the studio app? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I think I showed you a screenshot. Uh, yes, I just. I I there's a couple things I'm curious right. about. Private for my eyes only. I know. I wish I could look. I wish we could look at the numbers. I wish that this whole thing was just slightly more transparent. We'll get to a part that really bothers me when they start going through Boogie's monthly costs. Um, but yeah, the, the, the YouTube numbers are interesting. Not for you. Okay. So what I'm mostly curious about, I want to go lifetime. So dude, okay, this is what the revenue looks like. YouTube revenue starts, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, first of all, when YouTube started, it's just, I mean, the first three, years, the first three years I started on YouTube, there was no partner exactly. program. Partner program didn't exist. So we go like, and then just trickle, 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 trickle. That's, that's like exactly my fucking graph on my channel, bro. To where we are today is yeah. what your graph yeah, yeah, yeah. looks like that. That scares me. Yeah, I had like two good years. If, if you look at the 17 year history, I had- Same, like bro like two really good years. You've made 1.3 million. Okay, dollars. I didn't make that much, bro. That's a lot of fucking money, bro. Incredible. In 17 years, and which comes like, out no. to what per year? I know, but that's still Are a math guy. Well, not a public math guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I say, 1.3? Yeah. Over 17, 17 was when you started earning? Or 15 would have been when I started earning. Um, yeah, 80, $86,000 a year. Well, I mean, you're above the median I mean, household well, income. That, be, that of a uh, disability. Yeah, well. $86,000 a year is really good, especially in somewhere like Arkansas. I was on when I started the YouTube channel. Yeah, absolutely. Right? But this managing money correctly and not spending a lot of it on prostitution would equate to us having at least a little bit of money now. Well, again, to address that important part of the doc, yeah. uh, number one, those numbers are rounded up. Mike admitted that those numbers are, are, are rounded up and adjusted. Uh, secondly, okay, uh, this is another discrepancy that I'm sorry I have to go into. Boogie keeps claiming that Mike Klum, the documentarian that made the documentary about Boogie, admitted to fudging numbers in some sort of live stream that they had. I've never seen this live stream. I don't know what my live stream this is from. I don't know what clip this is from, but Boogie has never pointed to a link. He's never shown a video clip of the documentarian admitting to fudging numbers um so it annoys me when he keeps referencing that but uh, let's just say we don't know if he fudged numbers or not the documentarian himself majority of that money was spent traveling and yeah. i went to the game awards i went to disney i went it was still a huge waste of money but i think i think if we're dropping character and i think if we're being genuine here i think it's i started I if we're dropping character i'm being genuine with you right now guys 
to get a travel channel off the ground and try to do what my friend Jacob the Carpetbagger and Adam. This is like one of the worst ideas ever. Like, uh, well, I I don't know. I don't want to be too like unfair to Boogie about him starting a travel channel and thinking that that was going to be a good idea. Like, obviously, people do it and are successful with it, but it's it's really frustrating when somebody's struggling with money and their idea is to make content that costs a lot of money to film. Like, travel is not free. Everything that you do is going to be costing you money. Who do? And I thought people would watch me go to Disneyland, right? I'm a big, fat, weird guy trying to, to do this, do that. Turns out they did not want to watch me do that. So if you contributed of the, you know, 80 whatever that you're making on a monthly basis, 20% mm -hmm. uh, on a monthly basis, which is like just very basic recommended, mm -hmm. uh, contributing to just the standard stock market, 8% return, uh, you know, being a little more conservative there from beginning to end, you know, up years, down years, all combined 8%. Sure. Over the course of the f uh, 15 years, $17,000 a year would equate to almost half a million dollars. Now, now obviously we continue and just let that continue to compound and hopefully throwing more things in there. Mm -hmm. We could have gotten you to a point where, you know, mid sixties retirement, what scares me now, what scares me now, I'm not going to, so what Caleb is saying here is that if he had invested, if he had saved like 20% of his income and invested, he would have like $500,000 by now. Now that's awesome. That would be incredible. And everybody like should try, like, I don't know, go to a financial advisor or whatever, try to invest your money properly. But like, I've never done anything like that. I probably should. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's a little bit of like an idealist world where Boogie did everything right. Because I think that even if Boogie Boogie wasn't making like the worst financial decisions on the planet. He probably still wouldn't have been saving like that much. But anyway, where, you know, mid sixties retirement, what scares me now? What scares me now? I'm not going to talk about the age thing. Like whatever. This is, this is financial. Well, man, I'm not making it to mid sixties. Let's, no, no, let's I fucking know. hate when he does this shit. Like I'm not making it to mid sixties. Like Boogie's health is such a foregone conclusion to him. And as like a fellow, you know, fat guy who's like trying to lose weight and get healthier. It's so like, even though he's way older, like there's always a better future that is possible. Like, yeah, he could, he could eat himself to death. He could make it way, way, way worse for himself or he could try to do the opposite. Like there are diverging paths here where things could get way better or way worse. It's not just like one way that it can be. Honest. Oh, well, that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. I'm not talking about the, uh, I know a lot of people want to, okay. This is financial audit, not dating audit. So she's going to live longer than you. Sure. You guys might get married. Boogie has a 20 year old girlfriend that he's dating right now. So I just wanted to make that clear for everybody. So obviously if he dies in his mid sixties, she's going to be left as a widow at like 25 or no 35. Sorry about that. Not dating on it. So she's going to live longer than you. Sure. You guys might get married. Maybe. Sure. Probably. What do we do when you're no longer here and you've left nothing to a widow? Well, my this is such a great question and something that should really make Boogie think, but listen to his response about the idea of leaving his current girlfriend with absolutely nothing when he dies. Process has always been, when I met her, without getting into her personal history too much, because it's not necessarily the place for it, yep. but um, when I met her, she was struggling with severe social anxiety. Mm -hmm. She was struggling with um, just getting her life together. Uh, when I met her, I, I was talking to my friend, Michael Kidd behind a camera, and his plan was just be the person you needed when you were in that position. Because that's who I was when I was her age. When I was 20 years old, just like her, um, I couldn't function in the world. I, I played EverQuest in World of Warcraft and did uh, built terrible websites and made a, 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 bear, a barely passable income. What does this have to do with you leaving or anything? Well, uh, hold on, I'm getting to that. Okay. <laughs> He's, I, I like I like Caleb's like questions. I wish he was honestly even more critical, but he does like stop Boogie sometimes and be like, okay, what the fuck are we talking about? If I left her destitute, yeah, my plan is to still leave her better off than she was. Okay. Okay. So this is this is where this is a problem. So he says that like, oh, he met her and she had anxiety and she like wasn't doing well. But even if he leaves her with nothing when when he dies, he'll leave her better off than he found her. I think that's such a fucking fallacy. Like, let's say he dies five years from now. He leaves this woman with like having lost a portion of her 20s, half of her 20s. And that's if he dies in five years, lo losing half of her 20s 
living like this weird YouTuber lifestyle with this 50 year old man. Like I don't see that as like a better place than being 20 and like not having to deal with this whatsoever. But I mean like her choices are hers, but I think it's his responsibility as the older person to say like, Hey, I'm a guy. I can make some money. Like she can get a job. We can work things out financially and at least try and set her up with something if he happens to pass away. But he just doesn't see it that way. Right. Well, like get her sure. out into the world, get her the experience she needs, get her working if she when she's ready. But if we're get responsible with money, you actually leave ready. her a nest egg instead of just you know putting right. life. I'm yeah, so it's like you don't have to settle for the bare minimum, Boogie. Like you can actually try and do something to help her out here. Just now, saying, I'm just saying right now that's a conversation her and I have had, and like like that's a very real possibility, and she's chosen to stay with me because she's not in it for the money. Because right. she, she's fucking 20 years old and she doesn't know anything but being in a relationship with you or living with her parents. Like, that's where everything, like, kind of breaks down is that Boogie's like, well, she's choosing to be with me. Yeah, she's in love for the first time in her life. She's not necessarily making the most re responsible decisions for her future. And like I said, all of her decisions are hers to make. But as the way older person in the relationship, it's his responsibility to, like, try and and do the more adult thing, which would be trying to save up money. She's no. in it for the life experience. She's in it for the love. She's in it for the companionship. She's in it to become a better and stronger person. But as a partnership, caring about the other right. partner, you want to, instead of putting now, now with instant gratification, right. we want to leave Well, that's something. why I'm here. Yeah. Right? That's why I'm sitting down with you today. No, absolutely. Because I'm hoping you can help me create a financial plan that can... That's I love... I'm... This is, like, such a common thing that Boogie does. He will, like... He will, like, fight with the person on, like, why something that they're requesting does not matter. Like, oh, it's okay if I don't leave her with anything. And then once he's backed into a corner, he'd be like, he'll be like, oh, well, the, you know, that's why I'm here, trying to figure out my finances so that I can leave her with something. But, like, two seconds ago, he said it was fine if he didn't leave her with anything. Don't call out immediately direction. so you don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so you have a mortgage. Have now, a this mortgage. is your biggest equity position. Uh, what do we think the house is worth today? Zillow tells me 480. Um, mm -hmm. One of the houses in the neighborhood just sold for a little over 5 million. It's the same size. Or, sorry, uh, half a million. 500,000. Okay. <laughs> um, and it's it's the same size as mine. It's literally across the street and it just sold. So okay. I think there's a very real chance that I'd need to put maybe 20,000 of work into it. We need new carpets. We need paint. Um, yeah. Stuff like that. There's hole in the ceiling and, and some, you know, Did you almost lose this? Damage. Do what? Did you almost lose this house at one point? No, never. Okay. Yeah. That's always, I will bend over backwards to make sure that mortgage gets paid. Yeah. Uh, if I have to sell everything I own, if I have to, and I have, we've, we've made some. Remember decisions. that statement for when they talk about jobs later in the video. That I'm not entirely comfortable sharing um, because the people involved are private people. Sure. But I did move a roommate in. He's been helping a little bit here and there. Mm. Um, I had a roommate over the last 25 years. He's finally been able to kick in a little bit as well. So we are finding ways to. So there's two roommates. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, what was the purchase price of this house? The original purchase price two seventy five. And then I, I do want to talk about the roommates for the second for a second because uh, this has been a really weird topic. So Boogie, I thought he just had one roommate because he's had one roommate very long term, but I guess he has a second one now. And his whole line that he's been going to is that these roommates are very private people, and he can't really explain how they like help with rent or whatever. But apparently, one of them helps with a lot of stuff around the house that. You know, Boogie could do himself if he were in better shape, but that's kind of beside the point. It's so annoying that he's like, oh, my roommates want to be private people, and yet he keeps putting himself in positions like the documentary and like this interview here where he then has to talk about their lives to explain his financial situation. Um, it's just like, he kind of defeats the purpose of them wanting to be private by having to explain their role in his life over and over again. I refinanced in 2018 because of my divorce. So the loan in 2018 became 200,000 because I put more money down because I had money to, to put down. So I got it down to 207. And we're at 4.3%. What are we going to refinance? You're going to get like hit to 8% if you Well, uh, the plan would be to try to bring the initial monthly payment down. But I really don't want to have to ever do that. Um, because we're five years into a 15 year. So we paid so much principal off. Wow, you did 15 year. Yeah, I was making good money at the time. So I wanted to. I just want to. There's going to be a lot of stuff in this thing where I'm kind of going to like no react to it and not really have a lot to say just because I don't know. I don't know a lot of, about mortgages and interest rates. I'm really just here to like watch Boogie and see his inconsistencies, see when he shifts goalposts, see when he lies about things and talk about that. So when we get into like hyper technical stuff, I'm not going to sit here and play financial expert. So I'll just let Kay 
Caleb and him talk and we'll move on to the next section. I do 15 years. But now we're from 2018 to now we're five years into a 15 year. Now mm -hmm. I'm no math wizard and you are the math wizard, but that means I paid a good amount of principal off, right? I'm earning a very solid amount of equity by staying in that house, right? Well, you definitely pay more interest up front, but yes, five year into 15 year, you're definitely starting to see more benefit. Right. Absolutely. Um, well, I love the rate though. Yeah, the rate, you couldn't get a better rate, right? We would like, some with, my, people, but like with my credit, I could not have gotten a better oh, rate for at the sure. time. Uh, but I mean, the reality of it is, Moving out of that house and trying to stay in Northwest Arkansas near my medical professionals where I need to stay. You have to stay. Yeah, it's it's a very stupid idea. Um, there is very little in the area. I might be able to get an apartment for $900 a month. Um, I might be able to get a duplex for 1300 So remember that thing that he said about having to stay close to his doctors? For once again, later in the video, he will provide an alternate option to staying close to the doctors that he needs to be around dollars a month but paying twenty one hundred dollars in and then having some of that being brought in by roommates i'm paying as much to live in this house and build equity mm -hmm. as i would be giving it all to a landlord instead if anything I, of course i don't have the full financial history of like the last few years mm -hmm. but if anything that i know just from just internet mm -hmm. this was the good choice oh yeah this is a smart this, right? good choice yeah. and uh 30 year fix uh or 15 year fix there's different philosophies on that i personally go 30 year because i just feel like i can uh just make a better return on investment putting the rest of the money somewhere else but either way i'm totally okay with this to limiting risk knowing your position and knowing that the youtube career can be you know a quick whoo, i would have like okay we made one point whatever 1.3 million and we owed a total of two hundred eight thousand. i wish we could have just taken care of this and lowered your risk profile yeah, yeah. over that time instead of, course, of yeah. instead of doing the traveling and stuff like that where of all course. my money's been going, I pay a little extra towards this on a monthly basis, but where my money's mostly been going is to, into cash flowing uh, properties that then pay for this if YouTube goes away completely. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's, I wish we were risk mitigating right. in turn, but instead of that, we were going, I, I, guys, I wish we were risk mitigating. I wish I could say we were risk mitigating, but we're not risk mitigating. I don't know what is going on here. Like I forget exactly. I have watched this a couple times, but I forget exactly how this whole interview goes. So I can't just like skip past certain sections. And I do want you guys to get a full idea just in case you have any opinions. I mean, you can always watch Caleb, uh, video, uh, Caleb hammers video in full, but, uh, yeah, a lot of this stuff, I just don't have any commentary on cause I'm kind of waiting for Boogie to like get trapped in corners and start lying about things. <laughs> Into so nobody ever, nobody ever likes this answer. Okay. Um, because it's not a good one and nothing I'm about to say is an excuse, mm, well, let's hear it. but the headspace that I was in, in 2018, mm. um, was not a very good one. And so I was not planning for a potential future because I did not feel that I had. One. Yeah. Uh, in 2018, Christmas, I had planned to take my own life. Mm -hmm. And I made it to that Christmas date and I decided to postpone it for the dumbest reasons. Uh, Christmas Day. I don't, it's so weird that he calls this the dumbest reasons. Like, I'm not going to like, I from, from all that I know, these... Uh, thoughts about ending his life were true like these were real plans and stuff uh and he didn't but he says that the reasons that he's about to list are stupid and i just i don't agree yeah, i'm sitting there alone i have my dog in my lap and my roommate's out of town and i realize my dog's going to be sitting there with my dead body for three days and i'm like you know what i need to wait and I, I rescheduled to July 24th, uh, 2019, which is so yeah, I guess he didn't, he didn't want his dogs to be sitting with his dead body if he decided to, uh, to end his life. And I think that like, Hey, any reason that you can find not to end your life is a good one. It's not a fucking stupid reason. It's my birthday. Mm -hmm. And I thought in that process, I would travel a lot so that my roommate and my dog who'd never really bonded would begin to bond. So if you look at my travel scan plans in January, I spent a couple weekends away. In February, it became three-day weekends. And then in March, it became four days weekends. And by July, it rolled around. I spent two weeks in California saying goodbye to my friends with the plans of going home to end myself. I'm I very glad you didn't, by the way. Well, I ended up doing um, some... Yeah. Good job, Boogie. Honest. Oh, this is where it gets bad, though. This is where I start to get mad at Boogie again. So, like, I'm glad that he didn't end himself. He said that he was, like, having his roommate spend more dog time with the dog so that they could get attached before he passed away and stuff but um now he starts to get into like the medical benefits of psilocybin mushrooms and i just uh i'll it, just let him talk to end myself. i'm I very up, glad you did it by the way i ended up doing um some which i do not recommend right uh, we, we don't casually do i did it under the uh he says he doesn't recommend them but then he lists off i, I did that with the guidance of a shaman and my original trip was this shaman i don't know the full story but this shaman is like a really really wacky dude 2019 and i realized that i had to stay on the path that i was on i i realized that this was what i for better or for worse no matter how hard this was going to be yeah. i had to stay here and do it now here i am four years later doing it 
Um, and it's not been great. It's, it's not been, and I went home and COVID happened. And well, I have a question for you for the future of this uh, yeah. conversation and yeah. what we're trying to do here. Are you willing to, and I think it might be for like the true first time from just conversations I've watched preparing for this, and then obviously this conversation so far, sure. are we willing to just let go of the past? The past does not define us. We are human beings that are on this life, on the, have a life temporary on this planet, that we are growing, and let's look for the future Well, we now. are talking about the past. Like, we're talking about the financial decisions I was making in 2019. No, I know, but when it comes to right, what so like obviously uploaded, it's relevant, but for, if you're asking if I have personally moved on, yeah. Well, are, well, I, this is, yeah, this is something that Boogie does constantly. Like, when you're trying to make plans for the future, he just wants to bring up his past over and over again, because if you're going to start planning for the future, he wants to be like, okay, but when we're planning for the future, you have to know every bad thing that has ever happened to me, so you know who you're dealing with, and you know how unlikely it is that I will actually achieve anything. Are we willing yeah. to in this conversation? Like, are we willing sure, to? Sure, unless you ask me why I was making these financial decisions <laughs> in 2019, I'm going to tell you, kid. I'm going to tell you. That's fair enough. Right? No, that's fair enough. Yeah. But when it comes to, I uploaded this many YouTube videos then and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, okay, let's, like, what can we do in the future? Just make this awesome. Right. So that we can make sure you're financially secure. But I effectively, I, mean. I had a nervous breakdown at the end of 2019. And I don't even think he so he immediately it. just goes right back into the past like he like Caleb is trying to like transition this conversation from like all these bad things to like hey how are we gonna approach this issue going forward and he just wants to go right back into like all the bad things put this in your video but I said something extremely inflammatory I said that the people who have spent the last year harassing me uh, getting my sponsors to, to stop supporting me uh, attacking my fans um, and, and, and attacking me personally. I said that they were worse than... He said that they were worse than the bad guys in World War II. Uh, this is like completely irrelevant to the conversation. I don't know why he brings this up. He just likes to bring up things that make him look bad. Um, I guess that was the reason for his nervous breakdown. But honestly, in the list of things that Boogie has done at this point, I feel like the whole my fans are worse than the bad guys in World War II uh, or my trolls are worse than the bad guys in World War II. It's kind of like a footnote at this point. Which is not a thing you can say. Right? It's also not true. It's hyperbole. I didn't mean it. But that's, I said this on live stream. Right? You can't take that back once the cat's out of the bag. You in live stream. Yeah, right, right? <laughs> uh, which used to be extremely lucrative. I used to make five grand a month, 10 grand a month from live streaming yeah. when I was really at, good at it and really pushing it. Right? I would live stream for three hours a night, five nights a week, six nights a week, and we'd bring home five, 10K sometimes. I was talking to a very successful streamer a few weeks ago about you, and he thinks you can make like 20K a month. If on I kick. can keep my foot out of my mouth, and that's no, something I have kick. so much trouble doing. Even there, I mean, like, People, probably rightfully so, but for whatever reason, I think I'm held to a, a standard that I don't know that I'm good enough for. I'm going to say. Well, you also react to everything. Time. You you, you feed them. You yeah, feed yeah. them. It's the, I haven't yeah, opened yeah. TikTok in like two months, so it's like, yeah, a lot of the things that you, you want, to, a lot of things you want to talk about have really changed since March in this last year. What happened in March? Um, again, I went into some really intense therapy. Mm -hmm. I combined it with and the the mentorship of a shaman. Okay. And those three things. I, I, if you look at the statistics, modern science is showing, and I, I can recommend a, a documentary for anybody who's interested, How to Change Your Mind, it's available on Netflix, um, have the capacity to cure post-traumatic stress disorder. They do not. They absolutely do not. There is no scientific study that says that mushrooms can cure PTSD. Like, maybe he's confusing, like, can help a little bit with cure but saying on a fucking podcast that's going to go out to hundreds of thousands of people that these substances can cure an extremely difficult disease it's just oh it's ugh, i fucking hate it so much like i have experience with some of this stuff and like yeah there's interesting things that can happen but like when people want to point to them and say that they're the magic solution to mental health problems it's so disingenuous and it's a sign of somebody who's like only had a few experiences or is like really trying to shill for it which was my biggest issue right um it's one of the reasons i was stuck in these negative thought patterns and so with a combination of doing intensive twice a week therapy with a traditional therapist um while combining that with seeing a shaman and taking the much puts your brain into a, a place of neuroplasticity um and so you can learn finally right and then you do that with a the therapy and, and you can learn from the actual therapist and this last year i've made such tremendous strides yeah. i don't 
know about this. I don't know that Boogie has made strides. I've been watching him pretty closely for the past few months, and as recently as like three weeks ago on the Lol Cow Live podcast, he was showing like all of his worst traits. So as much as I hope that Boogie gets better just for his own life and the people around him, I just haven't seen a sign that there's like this drastic improvement. And we've seen this claim a lot from Boogie throughout the years that like, how can you not tell that I'm doing better than ever? It's like, it's just, we don't really see the evidence of that. It's, uh, right, so whatever works for you, man. I, right? Old Boogie, uh, a year ago, yeah. the egotistical, um, self-centered, extremely defensive you man. think you're different? He is this exact same person. When Caleb Hammer says, do you think you're different? It's such a fucking good question. Considerably. Okay. Yeah, considerably. Okay. Uh, I, he, I, here's how I know I'm different. I wouldn't have been here. If you invited me to do this in December of last year? I think he would be here. I think if he had the opportunity to be on a giant podcast, he absolutely would have taken it. Like, this is what he does. He, I don't know. I would have left him. Why? Because this is humiliating. This guy has 900,000 subscribers. Of course Boogie's going to come on this show. Difficult. This is hard. Oh, I have to swallow a tremendous amount of, uh, sure, it's, 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 how humiliating is it to look at every mistake you've ever made, <laughs> printed out, and be well, called out on your wanted to He literally, he literally agreed to do a documentary with, like, extremely similar themes. I don't know why he's like, oh, like, who else would want to do this other than a very humble psychedelic user? Oh, shit, I just full screened thousands of people to see hundreds of thousands hundreds of thousands right please you know? i uh hope i hope uh, where i try to structure it, uh the most episodes is hopefully we end towards positive note that is I hope so. that is where i want to go like the but future still, and but again i knew walking down here that this was uh, a hard pill to swallow it's very brave right uh but but i'm telling you pre never would have <laughs> even considered doing this uh this okay <laughs> maybe so he was better off before the show i don't know oh could you tell me what this is please this is either the car loan or one of the dumbest purchases I've ever made. Well, it's one of the dumbest purchases you've ever made. This is the car loan. Okay. Uh, we'll get to the dumb purchase soon. Yeah, the dumb so. purchase was a dog. Well, I have two dogs. They're great. I spent way too much on a dog. How much? He's a purebred miniature poodle. Sure. Which generally will cost you about three, three thousand to thirty-five hundred. Okay. I bought him at a pet store, so I paid five. He paid five thousand dollars for a purebred dog. Like they talk about how he like had more money at this time and stuff, but. I don't, I guess however people spend their money is fine. And I'm not here to like just harp on every single bad financial decision that Boogie's made. But like as somebody who like hates to see people throw money away, it's just hard to watch somebody spend 5k on a dog, especially because of how he feels about it now. How much money did you have at the time? Oh, about $108,000 at the bank. Oh, yeah. that's okay. Uh, but again, I was in well, the mind that I needed to build maybe. credit. So I took out a loan. What the f is that the person? Oh yeah, he took out a loan on the dog. Why? why who is buying dogs with loans? He's trying to build credit. Like he will justify literally every bad thing that he does with. Oh, I was trying to build credit. So let me put this hot dog on layaway or whatever. Yeah, that's the person. Dude, you're killing. That's me. the. I mean, that's the loan. That's, that's the. the loan. That's the synchrony. It's the synchrony. Yeah, there you go. So I'm gonna call. I have a loan with synchrony, but it's for a dental bill. Dog loan. That's the dog loan. What's do you, uh, so? What's remaining on the car? Do you remember the what? Do you know what's remaining on the car loan? The car? I don't know. Um, I, I, we should. We either on the last payment or like the last two or three. Okay. He says he's on the last payment or two. Before he said that he owed like a thousand to two thousand. Now it's oh we're on the last payment or maybe second to last payment on the car. Okay, we I have might, to look. We it might up take for sure. a look into yeah. it. Uh, and the personal loan. Neither of those are true, by the way. About a thousand, right? Left on it, something like that. That sounds right. Yeah. There is another small loan. What? Uh, there's a third one that you're seeing here. Credit card? Uh, no, it's a bed. I. Had, it's a what? I had to get an adjustable bed for my back and leg issues, and my doctor insisted that I looked into getting one. I looked into getting one, so I took out uh, paid like a uh, five hundred, six hundred down, and then took out like a twenty five hundred dollar. Twenty. Yeah. When'd you get it? So I'm not going to harp on him about the bed because it's, you know, a doctor recommended it. It's like quality of life shit. I totally understand that. Yo, thank you, Andrew, by the way. Interest rate? Six mm, percent. Mm. That's correct. What's the monthly payment? I think it's the 112 you're looking at. Oh, so that was yeah, the, that's secret. the Yeah, secret is usually a store finance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, credit card I want to take a look at in a second. Could you pull up your credit card app for me, sure. please? Yeah. I think I think you've seen it already, but to show you, I only own like nine hundred dollars on it, and it's uh, yep. it's just a utility card for the business. So it gets used and it gets paid off. It gets used and it gets paid off. Do you ever hold balances? Uh, over the last couple of months, yes, because it's been thinner than I would have liked. But I plan to pay it off with this check on the twentieth. So, but it's only mm, okay. It just scares me because it's only getting thinner, except for that spike. Yeah. 
Well, that's why. So yeah, a lot of like uh, uh, the upcoming financial decisions that Boogie makes, I think they're based on this fact that he had a spike on his YouTube revenue, which was like sixty eight hundred dollars in a month. I think something like that he made, which is more than he makes usually. But as they'll find later in the in the interview here, his. At, at absolute bare minimum costs are like $5,800 a month. So that's just like a thousand in extra money from this big spike on YouTube, which is, you know, probably going to decay unless he makes some big change in his content. I'm gonna pay off the, yeah, there's the, okay, the credit card and the balance of like nine. Especially since we're in like November, December, which are like the highest revenue months for YouTubers. Yeah, credit line available, thirty-one dollars and twelve cents. Yeah, kill me. Okay. Uh, so it seems like he has like nine hundred fifty dollars in credit card debt. At least that's what's showing up on screen. Uh, Again, I am still trying to do some credit card stuff, so I will pay off a little bit. How do you get a credit card? You already have a house. Um, because eventually I will have to sell the house, and I'll have to move somewhere when I do. Right? Why will you have to sell the house? The twenty-one hundred dollar mortgage payment is really hard. So you're saying you're not going to be able to afford them? They have four people living in this house. Like I know he's trying to keep his uh, roommates' lives private. His girlfriend does not work. That's its own situation. I hope that she ends up getting a job because it's just nice to own, earn your own money and make your own stuff and might actually provide you some independence from Boogie. But there are four people living in a house that's twenty-one hundred dollars. But somehow that's just like impossible. And for them to afford. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I will, but again, I'm always planning for the possibility that I won't. Okay? Late payment fee, October 31st, late payment fee. Yeah. $25, late, late payment fee, December 1st, this just happened. I yeah. feel like this guy's yelling at me because I get late payment fees sometimes. Oh, f me. October was a very lean month. <laughs> oh, and you have a brand new iPhone. Dude, this phone was free. Really? Yeah, Verizon trade. This phone was not free. I do not. I think they find out later in the video that the this this phone actually cost him like four hundred dollars or something like that. It does an iPhone seven for that. Mm, very Thank important you, business purpose. Uh, Chick Fil A. <laughs> Lucky it was all the way back. Dude, you eat, don't you eat? I eat. People eat. Not I definitely out. eat. I eat a lot. No, nah, you don't have to eat out if we can't afford a Dude, little. I can't cook for. I can't cook for three people for cheaper than twelve dollars. I can't oh. cook for three people for cheaper than $12. Wait a second. Let me get my... I was never skinny. Somebody in chat is saying, wasn't he skinny before? I was never skinny. I've been fat my whole life. I've been different levels of fatness. But right now, I'm at like a medium fat level for since I started my YouTube channel. Little handy dandy. First of all, that was three people? You did not feed three people on twelve dollars. Because it was just five bucks. So you just—he did not feed three people on like as a guy that has spent a lot of money on fast food in my life. Like these fast food purchases get way out of hand, and this is the part of the video, or at least when they start to get into the fast food purchases and all the incidental purchases throughout the month. I really wish he had actually itemized all of it and added it all up because it sounds like a fuck ton of money being spent on food per month. Got three chicken sandwiches eating That's eight fries, you got yeah. nothing. You feed three people on five bucks in a hurry. Deal. The chicken sandwiches, the chicken patties, uh, we have HEB, I don't know what your version is, but you sure. can get the frozen chicken patties, put them in the oven, and I promise they are individually less than $5, more of an individual we have Walmart, and they are not good chicken patties, and that is quicker, okay, so it's more convenient, taste. taste. But all all guess what poor people do when they can't afford food? Like, I had to make so many months work where I had to, like, buy the absolute bare minimum at the grocery store, and there are ways, like, even as a fat person that you can overeat on a budget. Like, uh, they'll fucking be completely honest. I've made it work before. Like, you buy a chicken breast, you buy chicken thighs, you buy fucking pizza doughs. There were, like, you to be like one dollar pizza doughs at walmart it was so much food for one dollar so even if you want to be fat as fuck like you can find a way to make it work for way cheaper than hitting fast food restaurants multiple times per day on top of that so now there's more reasons it's affordable right you we eat out two or three days a week it adds up to 15 dollars he eats out way more than two to three times a week yeah 15 30 45 but, bucks but it adds up to the card well i yeah that's true Late payment. That's it's it. not affordable if we can't pay the card. Do I look like the kind of person that's ever made sound decisions about food? No, but that's why. <laughs> this I'm... is what's, oh, man, this is so fucking rough. Like watching Boogie try and make a joke like that, like back, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago when he was on like the H3 podcast and he was like about to get surgery. Like when he would make silly jokes like that, like I'd be like, haha, Boogie, that's funny. And it's just like, but now it's just like everything's so sad and everything's so dire that when he jokes about something like, 
like, does it sound like I've ever made good decisions involving food? Like, it's just, like, it's, uh, he's so unlikable, I cannot fucking, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm fucking, it's as hard for me. Trying to, but that's why is, I'm trying to get this, it across. But this is my weakness. This is always going to be my biggest weakness. No, yeah. no, no, no. You're, you just, you just allowed yourself infinite excuses for the future. Oh, that's to take responsibility. That's, that's actually true, yeah. That's yeah. true. That's based, Caleb Hammer. He is trying to create infinite excuses. So why not like actually take responsibility and say, hey, we cannot afford to live right now. We don't get to afford to go out and but get that. traveling. Guess what we had for breakfast today? What did you have for breakfast today? Chick-fil-A. Could we use the apps? Why does he say this? Like, it's a cool thing. Free nuggets. What about the continental breakfast at the hotel? <laughs> Free. That's true, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's generally just a bowl of cereal. Yes, and that's food that goes in your stomach for free. For free. You can't afford to pay this. <laughs> Boogie. I mean, that's true. That's true. If, I, if, if there's anything I can get across in this episode for you to just walk away with buddy if we cannot afford to pay something if we can't even afford to pay off the credit card we're getting late fees and we're just getting i mean i have a, I, I have a food budget of about 300 dollars a month and then he spends way more than 300 dollars a month on food like they break it down later in the video it is not even close to 300 dollars we use that groceries it includes groceries most of the time yeah for we do eat we do eat groceries at home we have like some of the inexpensive meals we make we make tacos we make shrimp pasta wait wait, wait. can we just go back one sec I have a food budget of about three hundred dollars a month, and then we use that groceries. It includes groceries most of the time, yeah. For we do it includes groceries most of the time. Now, like there are a lot of situations in this video where like Boogie could be misspeaking, but I don't think you misspeak about something like that. Your monthly food budget includes groceries most of the time. So that implies that some months the food budget does not include groceries. Where is the food coming from then? Almost exclusively restaurants. This is no way to live, if, especially if this is not a way to live if you're rich. This is definitely not a way to live if you're struggling with money. We eat, we do eat groceries at home. We have like uh, some of the inexpensive meals we make. We make tacos, we make shrimp pasta. Uh, if I'm really feeling splurgy, we'll make burgers at home. Uh, we eat at home the majority of the Good. time. Yeah. Unfortunately, we and then he of... says we eat at home the majority of the time. It's like which way is it? For it to probably go out at all. Right yeah. Now. I'm, yeah. I'm really sorry. It sucks. I mean, it's true. Yeah. Um, also, like, I, I don't know if Boogie's like living in the past, but clearly when he's seeing prices, he's seeing the current prices. Fast food has gotten much more expensive in the past five years, especially in the past three years. But like, it is no longer like you can go to McDonald's and get a cheap meal for like making things okay for a little while. Like, it is not a good option for anybody on a budget anymore. So, okay. But it would have been more expensive to drive back to Fayetteville. And, and make a taco than it would have been to go to Chick-fil-A today. But you're right, we could have eaten cereal at the buffet. Yes, I, yeah, was, that's about true. To, I was about to flip the f oh. Kill me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I can't see is the interest accruing. Obviously, we have the late fees, but the mobile apps love to try to hide how much interest is accruing. I mean, I, I just pay the, the, the minimum balance every month, and, and the minimum fee is generally So that's months. what you meant by paying it every month? The minimum balance, not Sometimes the I pay off more, yeah, for sure. Oh, f Okay, yeah. well, that's really bad. If we hold a card that's accruing interest, then we can't afford to go out to once. We just can't. That's true. Yeah. Because interest well, this is this will Well, this will get paid off on the 20th. With this... This huge, um, all of the, it, all of it, yeah, the whole thing. Huge? It's, I don't know, let's just see if they get to how much money he actually made. Yeah, yeah, from the, what? From the spike that came in AdSense from... Oh, oh, like the $6,000, that's, okay. I make 7800 is what we made in the... Okay, no, 7800 I think he's saying 7800 here, so that is more, but at the same time, if your monthly costs are $5,800 and you made $7,800 one time and you normally make around $3,000, that $2,000 in extra money is not going to go far. Because guess what? It's pretty much already spoken for the next month if you don't make that same amount of money. Uh, November, which was really awesome. I, I'll, I'll hope we can maintain that. But is this a debt, the preferred club? That's the house loan, right? Uh, sorry. Uh, or, yeah, that's my current checking balance. So that's weird. That scares me. Yeah. Anything less than a thousand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exxon, fair, came down here. McDonald's, less fair. Yeah. Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait till you get to the Starbucks. Then you're going to get real mad. I'm not one of those people that freaks out about Starbucks. $5, $5 every couple of days. I love me a pink drink. I love me a... a oh, know. well, I'll freak out about that because you can't afford it. Yeah. Well, uh, like, I'm not one why? of those... Why? Oh, my God. It's like... I, I, like, I don't like arguments when people say, like, oh, you go to Starbucks, like, because people do, like, it is nice in life when things are miserable and you have no money to have a little treat every once in a while. But when it's a regular thing, like you're going to Starbucks every couple days, that shit adds up. If you spend $5 at Starbucks every other day, that's 15 times a month. That's $75 a month. That's a lot of fucking money. That when people can afford it, I, I don't yeah, yeah, out. as long as you're hitting investing goals that are necessary to survive. Sure. Cameo, I'm glad that came in. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's a little extra. Yeah. Yeah. hundred bucks. You can book me at cameo.com. StreamYard, we're paying for it. Yeah. Barely made it back. Yeah. It's necessary for the podcast. That's where. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, Boogie uses StreamYard for the Lol Cow Live podcast, which is run by Keemstar. So it's weird. Like, one, it's weird that they're even using StreamYard. That's like ancient technology. They should be using like Discord or something like that. But uh, it's weird that Keemstar, who's like a multi millionaire, did not pay for StreamYard for Boogie. But anyway. Uh, oh, utilities. Yep, that's fair. Can't can't hate against no utilities. Same with gas. Walmart. You can never really tell what's being purchased from. So Walmart, most of so. my Walmart purchases tend to be meds. Uh, I'm on mm. a lot of meds. The most expensive, which is my testosterone, which is two hundred dollars a month. With your uh, medical issues, do you think McDonald's, Papa John's, Starbucks, McDonald's, Chick Fil A, all in? He's uh, listing off these purchases. Like there are so many times where he will list off a string of fast food purchases or like gas station visits and shit. That uh, like I wish these had all individually been added up because every single time he lists it, it's like a list of like five stops, and it really fucking adds up quickly. Uh, all being processed within a couple days time is helping no, no, no it's not helping your wallet either no 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 why are you still doing it if we know we're killing ourselves and we're financially killing ourselves why do you think you're still doing it i think i wouldn't weigh 400 pounds if i knew the answer to that question okay well you obviously had discipline mm -hmm. for a bit though because you did go through the surgery which is very difficult well the surgery did its job which yeah. is to say uh it ex extremely restricted my stomach intake and it still does to this day okay in, in a lot of the american versions don't they require you to lose a good amount up front before you yeah, have to get it okay so you had the discipline to do that um, well, it was a lot easier when um, I walked into a, an emergency room with a blood pressure of 280 over 180. And they're like, hey, you're dying now. Okay. You're not dying eventually. You're dying now. But you kind of. Well, he, he's, you're like, dude, you're like 50 years old and you're saying that you're not going to make it to 65. Like, how close to dying now do you have to be for it to, like, fucking shock your system and say like like i don't know like being fat and shit i'm fat as fuck like there's a lot of people that struggle with being super fat so like i'm not gonna say there's like an easy solution but like the cutting out of fast food is just like this huge financial win and this huge health win that is just like you if i don't know are i mean this no, wait, you said you're not gonna listen unfortunate this, this is this is the healthiest i've ever been but you said you're not you, you i don't think this is the healthiest boogie has ever been like if you like, I don't know. I know that you can't, like, tell exact health by size, but, like, when you're at this size, I can tell you that, like, a 50-pound difference makes a huge difference. And Boogie is, like, 400 now. He was 350 at one point. So, like, these differences that you do feel different at those two weights. I've been both of those weights, and you feel way fucking different. You feel like you're going to be here in your 60s. Well, that's just the stark reality when you've done what I've done to my body. I know. That just, yeah, to just... me, that feels like now. That's her. I, I see this 15, 20 years from now because that's what it is. Ugh, you're so disingenuous, Boogie. Like, it's it just because you could make it to 65, he could make it way past 65 if he got his health together, doesn't mean that is guaranteed. Something could go wrong any fucking second. Certainly not. Well, you're, yeah. you're 50, 60. It's not 20 years from now. <laughs> well, it was mid-60s what we're saying, right? Okay. So that's 15, 20 years from now. It's not Stop. 20 years. Like, mid-60s is 15 years from now, but anyway. Starbucks? Yeah, Starbucks. There's lots of Starbucks. Tokyo house is very expensive. There. Business 90 bucks. Business okay. The boogie's going to explain why he does these business dinners, but if you're broke, don't buy business dinners. Hey, let's have a phone call. Hey, maybe you can come over to my house. Hey, maybe we meet at a Starbucks and we don't fucking buy anything. There's no reason to be taking people out to fucking business dinners when you're broke. You should be the person who's taking advantage of being taken out to business dinners, not paying for them for other people. No. That one was write-off. No. Write-off of what? Also, tax write-offs do not mean you, like, get that money back. Like, it just goes into your taxes, and maybe you get tax less at the end of the year. You do get tax less or whatever. But it's not like it's free because it's a tax write-off. Prime video, Starbucks, Starbucks, not even a full month back yet. Starbucks is a lot. Arby's. So all of these things that he's been listing are not even more than a month ago. Everything that he has listed has happened in the past month. Food that tastes like something. Hey, let me tell you a little bit of something about Arby's, okay? Good fries? They have very good fries. Mm. But recently, I've been getting to realize the value that you get from Arby's is surprising how much food you get. Okay. 
Shut the fuck up, for one. Okay, uh, Arby's, honestly, kind of underrated. I will die on this hill. They have some decent food there. But it is not cheap. None of these restaurants are cheap. They might be cheaper than other options, but none of this is cheap. This dude just said, oh, all these Walmart bills, they're mostly for medication. Bro, I, like, if you don't want to support giant corporations, like, that's fine. Walmart is going to be the cheapest place to get 99% of your food products. Your Walmart bill a month should be one of your biggest bills if you're trying to save money. Like, that's where you should be buying your food. Unless there's, like, some discount grocery store in your town specifically, that's dope. Like, go there, support them. But usually Walmart, from my experience, is going to be the cheapest food. For your amount of investment. Wait till I teach you really about... It doesn't taste good. I want to make it very abundantly clear. Why would you be fucking going there if it doesn't taste good? If it doesn't taste good, buy rice and beans at Walmart. That'll taste better than not. Why would you buy fast food if it didn't taste good? Again, when you're feeding multiple people, you save a lot of money at Arby's. Wait until you hear about the You can't, you won't save a lot of money at Arby's. He's wrong. It'll blow your mind. <laughs> Burger King. Netflix. Yeah, wait until I, he, that was fun. That was a funny Caleb Hammer. You save a lot of money at Arby's. Wait until you hear about the grocery store. It'll blow your mind. <laughs> Burger King. True! Netflix. I can get on there anyway. Starbucks. I just canceled Netflix, actually. Good. Yeah. Good lad. Based. Canceled... Good job. So Netflix, and I canceled um, Hulu. And the only thing I have now is Disney+, Plus, which we watch literally every day. Uh, and Amazon Prime, which I pay for for the shipping and for the things that we need anyway. Starbucks, Starbucks. More Arby's. It's all food. I mean, like, I can save you all the scrolling. It's all food. We're, but we're not even halfway through a month. This, this we're is the... not even halfway through a month, and he's listed all these things. There's there's a point in which uh, Caleb says that, like, he didn't have the normal amount of prep time with uh, Boogie's, like, expenses and stuff. I really wish he did. And if I could request one thing from Caleb, I know he'll never see this, please, if you can, break down all of those food costs if you have the chance. Because I really want to know what the exact numbers were. Like, how much did he spend at Starbucks? How much did he spend at Arby's? Like, or we could just do fast food and Starbucks, but it's a lot of fucking money. I'm almost, like, positive. This is what I feared going in here. So, we have a credit card. Sure. We yeah. have a credit card, that, and we weren't able to do the math that we typically do, but I would not be surprised if you did not go out and have these $25 drops every single day, uh, 12 to 25 something around there. Yeah, it's almost, yeah, we, we spend about 12 to $15 on, on food a day. Let's call it 15 he just, he said earlier that they only eat out, like, two to three times a week, and now he's just completely, like, copping to the fact that, like, yeah, actually, no, we eat out for, like, 12 to $25 a day. Yeah, let's call 15. That's well, actually very fair. We'll call and it's 30. probably more than that, I'm gonna guess. We could have paid off, uh, well. Let's not call it, oh, yeah, 30 days, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, let, uh, we could have paid off well, half. Now you throw yeah. the Starbucks in there and you throw the business dinner in there, even if you're writing it off, we probably could have paid off the credit card that is accruing interest and that we're missing fees. By the way, if we're getting hit with late fees, oh yeah, that's the worst way. To, and know, like, yeah, I'm not like, like, like somebody brought up a good point in the chat. Like this is classic stuff when like you grow up poor and nobody gives you good financial advice. Um, but it's just brutal to watch this because all of these like incidentals throughout the month, these like fast food restaurants, he's putting all of these on a credit card that is building up a balance and then he's not paying off that balance and then that balance is accruing interest which is like just not not good i'm not a financial expert but uh when you're accruing interest that means that you're like paying for stuff that you didn't actually get you're just paying for interest it's, it's not good like any, not getting Starbucks. any financial show on the planet will tell you if you're getting charged late fees or credit card interest or loan interest uh then you can't be spending then i'm struggling here do you give do you care i like, I love that Boogie says that because he's like, he like pretends to like, or like, I'm not going to say he pretends to be informed, but I think he tips his hand that he is more informed than he lets on, but he just consciously makes these bad decisions. And I think this is a very large theme in Boogie's life is that he makes these really bad decisions. He knows that they're bad, but he assumes that like, if he can just weasel his way out of it, then he can come up with some explanation as to why he did it. But he's constantly doing things that he knows are not good ideas. And then he's just like, well, I'm stupid. I'm dumb. It's like, no you've acknowledged that these things are bad over and over and over again doing them over and over again does not make you just like stupid it's something else it's not just dumb it's something else i do it's uh again... then stop be an adult <laughs> act your age is what i would say i mean that's true fair uh, again food has not been 
a area that I have been very successful at controlling. Trust me, I can't really talk about it either. Dude, let me tell you, but at least I can afford it. I've taken it's bigger than you, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, listen to me, dude. I've eaten more than, I, like, yeah. than you at a buffet before, Just okay? Please not in my bathroom, All right? please. You, I, I appreciate that you think you know what it's like to be addicted to food. Mm. Just because, like, I, I know that it's always different when you're, like, way bigger. Like, I'm way closer to Boogie's size than Caleb's size. But, like, if you're fucking huge, just because somebody doesn't look big doesn't mean they don't know what it's like to struggle with food. And, and Caleb will briefly touch on this, on his issues with food, but he kind of, like, submits to Boogie's uh, claim that, like, Caleb doesn't really get it. I promise you, you don't. I will be honest, one of my big struggles is on a daily basis, like I won't eat a ton during the day, but then I'll get something fatty, greasy, sweet, and then I binge a massive portion in the evening. That is my typical issue that happens. And I, I yo-yo 30, 40 pounds constantly. Yeah. I'll be good for a while and then I'll yo-yo. So I can't talk about that. I mean, the only reason, I, the only reason I'm not 600 pounds again is because the surgery is doing its job. Can I ask how much you weigh? 400. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, good I, job. My, my lowest ever was 330. Um, I got back up to 400. This is where I stayed. Yeah. With, within a, a 20 pound variance. I've and gone down to 380 and I've gone back up to 400. What does your doctor want you to be? I mean, ideally, you'd like me to be my adult weight of like 175, right? Like that's what anybody would want. Yeah. Um, we're talking knee replacement surgery when I get home. How much does and that cost? I think it's not even. I, I, hopefully, Blue Cross Blue Shield will cover it. I, have, I pay $800 a month for the best insurance I can afford because no I choice. absolutely have no choice, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's See, that's like, that, like the, these things, like some, like, I don't want to paint it as like, well, I mean, like if you want to talk about faults, like faults can be thrown around all over the place. You could say that Boogie should have made these different decisions in the past. He definitely can make different decisions now, but as far as like health insurance and some of these medical costs, they are unavoidable, at least right now for Boogie. So I'm not going to like harp on that too much. Do us here. I meet my deductible within the first like two months, most of the time. Lots of Amazons and Panda Express. Yeah. Gas. You must drive a lot. We don't or drive we, a lot, but we tip. We might have a tank a week, give or take. We might take a so do you go in there and get a bunch of drinks then? Because I'm seeing like gas stations. Oh, no, a never. Lot. I don't go into. Yeah. Because I'm seriously like two weeks back and I've seen like five gas stations. Well, we did travel here. Um, so we needed to fill up at home. We filled up here. Yeah, but that was yesterday. Like I'm talking in the last two weeks. Starbucks. Yeah. So this is another thing. This is like, as a, like, like it's kind of cool that I'm like a fat guy who does fat things because like these gas station things, if he does not need to fill up his car a lot, and there are a lot of gas station purchases. Yes, snacks, drinks, they're being bought at these places. And like, sometimes it just happens. Sometimes you just need a beverage. But when you are broke, you need to start planning these things. Like, I've had to do this shit, I still have to do this shit. Like, you fill up some water bottles before you leave. You bring stuff from home. You don't just fucking go out and be like, oh, my hands are forced, I need to buy a Coke, I need to buy a Mountain Dew Zero at the gas station like i can guarantee that these gas stations were like snacks and shit starbucks breaking stuff oh, no, I, I, well, I won't say guarantee because i can't fucking but like it, yeah it's like i I'm, I'm when i call him out i'm speaking from experience these are probably like drinks and snacks like caleb suggested on my way to starbucks uh last month i was on my way to um Cleveland, Ohio, to finish this documentary. So that's probably maybe what you're saying. He said yeah. two weeks ago. This does not line up. Like every explanation that Boogie's giving is just immediately disproven. This does not line up with him driving anywhere for the documentary. Oh, we the documentary that we talked about, the one that everyone has seen. Yeah, I, I, I generally, but I we generally fill up the tank once a week. It's a hybrid. We, I mean, look, you'd have to drive 555 miles a tank. Is what I get. So okay, I'm struggling with the eating out once a day thing because now that I'm just going through here, I'm seeing about two to three if we're considering Starbucks and we're considering. Uh, unless this is when they're hitting, but seriously, scroll yeah, here, I think like that's when 13, 14, 15, like these are just individual days, 16, and yeah. there's well, two, three in well, each. Well, I think that's probably more when they're hitting. But, but even if that's when they're hitting, still, yeah. since this is section out day by day and three are hitting a day, even yeah. if they're coming from a previous day, like said, we average then about it's like $15 on, on fast food a day. Yeah, yeah, but I'm also kind of struggling with that because if we go here, okay, yeah, middle of November, uh, Golden Crow, well, $62 at Golden Crow, but okay, we'll call that an oddity, right? We just, we went to Golden well, Crow. I mean, it was, I invited, you know, somebody else to the, my, my editor. Mm -hmm. Me and my friend Flint and my girlfriend. Your editor, you pay your editor when I need to, yeah. yeah. When he's when he's got a when he's got a project that we need Wait, to work on. Why aren't you why, why aren't you editing your own stuff? You have time, I assume. Um, he's incredibly better at it, and so if I have, I, I don't know what videos this editor is editing for Boogie. I like I guess when he does more complex projects, he uses the editor, but I don't see anything on Boogie's channel that isn't documentary related that would require any sort of professional editor actual project that needs to get yeah. done and he works for minimum wage for me to be very clear because he's a friend 
So, but occasionally he'll get a business dinner to talk projects and stuff. Uh, he'll get a business. Like he talks about this business dinner. Like it's part of his employees compensation, but it just doesn't make any sense. Don't do business dinners. If you cannot like afford the normal things in your life, don't be like, Hey buddy, you, you've been good. Let's go out to a business dinner at the golden corral. Like it's just not, it's not within your range of things that you can do. And then we're getting back to you, Tony. So we've gotten close to a month. So yeah, minimum once a day. And then yeah, you throw you throw an extra five dollars from Starbucks on there as well sometimes. Sometimes yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, and also before Caleb was pointing out that like there were like two or three transactions from fast food restaurants coming out per day, and then Boogie was trying to say, oh maybe they're just like those are from other days, but they're hitting all at once. And then Caleb explains that like no, there are so many stacked up on each other that even if they were hitting all at once, these are coming from like multiple individual days over and over again. So Boogie could be spending anywhere from like 30 to $45 on food outside of the house per day. Every 20. other day. Let's call it 20. 20. But again, but most of the time I'm feeding two or three okay. people off of this but, money. But that's 15 is like, that's like the minimum we're spending a day. At Let's right. call it at that point, $600 a month on food. Oh, one second. So minimum 15 a day, plus probably five for Starbucks every other day. So 2.5 a day. Yeah. So then we saw uh, about once a week, maybe twice a week sometimes, there's that Dave and Buster's, there's the Golden Corral, there's that that other thing. So all of a sudden that throws off the average of 15 a day, turning it to what would probably be evenly distributed, 20, 25 dollars a day, throwing the Starbucks, maybe 30 dollars a day on average. Sure, yeah, yeah. So if, if we actually start going off of that, and again, I wasn't able to do the normal math that I was able to do uh, before most episodes, we're looking closer to like 900 bucks a month. And I wouldn't be surprised. Let's, let's call it that then. Yeah. Yeah. 900 dollars a month is so much, especially considering that they are just talking about eating out right now. They are just talking about eating out and like, like, they were talking about Walmart earlier, and Boogie was saying that that's pretty much just for medication. I, Caleb was going through everything. I did not see a single grocery store mentioned. Like, and this is not, like, I'm not trying to, like, bull, bully Boogie here. It's just, like, this, these habits are incompatible with someone who is not filthy rich. You can't just be eating out all the time. Like, your basis of life has to start at the grocery store, especially if you're going to be overeating. It's like even more of a reason to only shop at the grocery store. Like it's, you should maybe like as a treat, you can do something once in a while so that your life doesn't completely suck. But it's like, it's completely flipped upside down of what it should be. And that's definitely, there's definitely room to cut. Uh, I, I include in any time I talk about these budgets online, I generally say 600 for the stuff, but 900 might be more realistic. But you can't afford 600. That's true. That's true. Um, so and this is all going on a credit card too. So like, that's just, it's just bad on top of bad. You said you're feeding multiple people. I understand obviously girlfriend situation. Okay, sure. Who else are we feeding? Um, so again, I, my roommates mostly like to remain private. They're not on social media. Okay. Um, so I, I do have some difficulty divulging the arrangements that we've made. Okay. But in exchange for uh, a lot of things that I physically cannot do. Mm, I can't I mow my lawn. I can't get into the attic. I cannot do a lot of the things that are necessary to be done. So in-house help. That's right. So in exchange for in-house help, uh, every once in a while, I get someone a sandwich. And if I were... This is like, oh, it's just so like... It's so confusing because, like, Boogie, like, he claims that he doesn't want to talk about these people's private lives, they're private people. It's like, maybe you need to make certain aspects of your life more private if these people want to be private. But since you're exposing everything, it's impossible for their lives to be completely private. And one of these guys is, like, doing stuff for Boogie and that justifies him living there. But, like... The real issue here is that if Boogie were in better shape, that stuff would not need to be done. So there's so many problems that, like, they could have solutions if you just made different decisions. And I know that he has, like, a complicated relationship with this one roommate, but, like, when it's coming down to, like, your livelihood, you can't just say, like, this person needs to be involved because... I don't know. You can't save everybody. You can't like be a hero in this scenario if you start drowning. We're paying to get the lawn done. My house, it's, no, it's way ridiculously more expensive than an Arby sandwich. I would right. Rather... So the deal that I have set up with my roommates now, I'm saving a tremendous amount of money. But that will occasionally include, hey, hey, man, you want to go out to dinner? It's been a month. Can I take you out to dinner tonight? Mm -hmm. Because 
I, I, or Why? Do, just just get him, like, buy him a sandwich. Make him some food. Maybe you cook for him. Like, maybe we learn how to cook and you cook some food for your roommate. Like, it doesn't... It's so silly to, like, throw this money away into the void by being like, hey, let's fucking go out to dinner. It's like you're wasting money for everybody. Maybe just give cash to that roommate. Like, it's so weird to do this this event style of paying for people for things. I'm never in a position, not to speak too much about my roommate's private business, but I could never imagine myself in that position where I would get paid so little and do so much mm -hmm. to, to help him. He's just, he's calling himself out here. He's saying like, I'm exploiting my roommate for his labor. Like I can't imagine getting paid so little to do so much shit. Like it's very strange. Uh, I mean, I'd like to think I'd be able to, but I, physically, I, I can't do most mm -hmm. of these things. Mm -hmm. right? I can't climb a ladder. I can't. You know, these are things I physically cannot do, and I'm very blessed in that regard. And so, yeah, it, it's probably, I know it's a stupid investment, but since they're making such a stupid investment this way, I don't mind making a stupid investment their way. But I mean, it's, if you fall financially, see, this is like the thing, this also kind of loops back to like when Boogie, um talks about certain financial decisions that he's made as like, oh, it won't matter because I'll be dead anyway when he was talking about like plans to take his own life. It's like anything that you do since you have people that are like dependent on you in some way, it's going to affect them as well. So like if you fail, everybody involved here fails as well. The pain in your rent. Yes. What are you getting? Because that helps offset some of the budgetary costs that we're gonna have to go into. Do my roommates pay rent? There is compensation, not just in terms of things that they're able to do around the house or things that I cannot do, mm -hmm. but there is compensation. Okay. But it's not something I'm, again, they are private people. I don't wanna to get too much into their lives. Totally fine. I do get that. And I, I wanna make sure we're protecting privacy so that yeah. you know, nothing negative can happen. So that's fair. It's so weird. This whole private lives of his roommate thing, like I hate to like keep talking about it, but it's so weird that like, he's doing these things where they're going to be brought up and yet he claims to want to keep their lives private and like to his credit he is holding back some information but like with all of the stuff that he has to dance around you can put together a decent idea of what is going on with these roommates in your own head um have you ever downloaded the app credit karma i believe so i don't have it on my phone currently if, if we could just get you to go through that it'll take yeah, about sure. five minutes all right credit score we've jumped up yeah, yeah, 673. Yeah, like I said, I, I, I do know the tools to build credit. I Someone yeah. sent me down to do it, and I'm trying to maintain the best credit that I can. Certainly, that's not in the 700s. There's plenty of room, right? Yeah. But considering my financial situation, if I needed a stopgap loan, which I hope I never do. That's what right? emergency funds are for. Right, well, again, I don't have- He has good credit. I will give that to him. He does have good credit, and that's, like, cool. Like, that's 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 awesome. Um, he also has some money left over in crypto. So when we talk about all these problems, there's like, they're going to bring it up later. There's like 7K hanging out in crypto that could totally crash at any time. But anyway, unfortunately. Oh, what's this actually? 7,730. Oh, there we go. There, there it is right there. And oh, man, so yeah, he's got 7,700 at the time of this snapshot uh, in his crypto wallet. Of everything. That's everything. Okay, but that is, that is money. That is money. What's it in? This is uh, currently sending in Ethereum, and since I printed this off, it's actually worth more. Yeah, but what so he's like bragging that his Ethereum is now worth more since this screenshot was taken. It could be worth less tomorrow. Like this is not a safe place to hold your rainy day fund. Like I don't know if there's some reason why he needs to hide his money here. I mean, he gives justifications of like there's going to be some net loss there, and it might help him with taxes if he takes it out slowly. But it just feels so stupid for someone who has lost so much in crypto to just leave almost 8k in there. We learned. Well, we've learned that I don't think that market can go any lower. I generally, I, there's always going sir. to go to zero. It can't go to zero. Sir, it can't it go can't to zero. Sir, what go are we talking about? You don't take the loss until you sell. Okay. Well, okay. and also it was also kind of smart to spread off the losses across multiple years so that I get that nice tax deductible. Yeah. So that's his justification that he gets some break on his taxes from taking corporate or not corporate capital losses or something. Okay. Sleep number three thousand two hundred eighteen. Was that the total? Not 2,500. This is why I, I have. This I guess it was more than up. that. Good idea. Okay. And yep, there's the credit card as we saw. Lending USA. Uh, oh, here's the card. 6,472. Is that what I have left? 
Yeah, which yeah. is a lot more than you said. So initially, Boogie said, "Oh, I own, I owe, I owe like one to two thousand on the car." Then he says, "I have one to two payments left on the car," uh, and his payment is like two sixty or something like that. It turns out he owes like what was it, like sixty four hundred on the car. So he was only off by like four to five thousand dollars, or even like six thousand dollars if you're taking the one to two payment uh, number to be the truth. Suggested. I guess so. Nah, that's why we do the little investigation. Well, that's why, yeah, yeah. Again, I ballpark this stuff in my brain. I've never looked this stuff up. I ballpark this, like, why would you ballpark a car payment? You can see the balance if you just look at the account. It's, like, so strange that he just, like, lets these things sit there and he just guesses. Like, he is on a financial audit podcast and he's still just ballparking things. Like, it's just such a weird, I don't, I don't understand. So I'm glad we're looking it up today. And so this I know for sure. Lending, uh, personal loan, three thousand four hundred forty-eight. That's my dog. And do you want to know something? Worst investment in my life because I don't even like the dog that much. I hate you, Boogie. I like I dislike you so much when you say I don't even like the dog that much. It's like why? Why even mention like I don't know. I love my first dog. He's like a uh, he's my sole dog. He's like the fa- member of the family. The second dog, he's mostly just a dog. I he's a good dog. He's a really good dog. I really like him. But I didn't want a dog. I wanted another Sammy. You know, and I got a, I got a Leo instead. But he's still a great dog. Okay. He just shits all over this fucking dog. Like, yeah, uh, this dog, the dog isn't even here to defend himself. You're just talking shit behind the dog's back. Very uncool behavior, Boogie. Is... What are we down to? Two thirty-eight a month. Yeah. We're halfway through the loan. Yeah. So he, we... he thought there were one to two payments left. He's not even halfway through the loan. He really sounded like Ugh. we were much closer. I thought I was again. And as uh, once again. I care so much less about how bad Boogie is doing financially than I do about the fact that he's lying about it. If he wants to be broke, that is perfectly fine. Like, there's plenty of broke people. I'm broke myself. Not doing great financially at the moment. But it's like, I'm not trying to pretend that things are different and pretend in, like, ten different ways that, like, my life is simultaneously all these different things at the same time, depending on who I'm talking to or what sounds good or what people want to hear or what's going to make people feel bad for me. Like, it's, like, it's just so frustrating to see him like shift goalposts like this i think maybe i don't have a solid in, in understanding of how much interest i'm paying up front in some of these loans because i thought i would have paid off considerably more of the the actual loan by now well, you took out a five year okay so i'm gonna steal from our uh <laughs> friends uh, the money guy yeah i mean really you want to pay it off if you're gonna take it on a car loan no more than 8% of your income on a monthly basis goes towards it. You put 20% down every right. time. Which is certainly and considerably less of that. I, I paid half. And on a third, three-year t- right. three term. Well, I paid half. The initial loan was 10000 because I paid half. I paid half up front. If I remember correctly. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and then... And again, the only reason I... So, is- yeah, if he only had $10,000 in a loan for the car and he still owes 6400 he's not even halfway. He's paid 4600 and he owes 6400 So, he thought he was, like, almost done with this car payment and he wasn't even close to halfway. That's the back half because I had the cash. I could have spent it. Um, it was before crypto... Wait, dropped. 64 No, I'm stupid. Am I dumb? No. Yeah, 64. No, that means that he's paid 3600 on the car. 64 plus 36 equals 100, right? Yeah, I think I think that he's like way less than halfway on the car. I don't know. I should have probably done it. But the only reason I, I'm getting my numbers mixed up. Boogie's so confusing, he's confusing me. To try to maintain this credit score. I have some small loans. Your dog. Your dog. $5,000. Yeah. No, it's it thinks it's at 23.49 percentages is what it says you are at. That's the loan. No, that you, can't be right. Are you sure? That's what I think it is. That, is don't, that... don't get a loan for a dog. Like, dogs are cool. Dogs are great. Rescue a dog. Like, if you can afford it. If you can afford to take care of a dog, rescue a dog. Don't pay $5,000 for a dog. And if you do, in some world, have $5,000 to pay on a dog, pay it in cash. And then you'll just be done. You'll have a dog. And you won't owe people money. That's... that's is that even legal to make a 23% You're, loan? Yeah, oh, yeah. There's people on my show all the time. That doesn't seem legal. 30, credit cards are over 30%. Your credit card's probably over 30%. I would... I mean, like, it's the minimum payment is like 20 Finances are very serious. Like, I, I feel like this is, like, I'm sorry I'm pausing so much, but, like, I'm thinking about my own financial situations and, like, sp- things that people get into. Like... Finances are not a joke. And, like, if you're in a really bad spot, like, I feel horrible for you. And I'm not trying to, like, lecture anybody. But, like, 
they're like boogie has like loans with interest rates that are like 24 percent and stuff these are really these can be life ruining loans like you should always read contracts be sure of what you're getting into like talk to people if you can um like this is really scary stuff like if he wasn't um if he didn't have like equity in his home he could be completely fucked dollars a month so off of a you know thousand why? a thousand you know why the minimum payment is twenty dollars a month because they want the interest to continue to accrue oh, okay all right that's, I thought that's it was not your benefit no oh well buddy. the number the numbers numbers never broken over like a thousand oh, so buddy. no my number, my, okay i'm now i'm understanding where we might be in terms of financial knowledge no that's not how it works okay with credit okay. cards but then educate me yeah I'll, so I'll, I'll, yes well, please well the credit card, for credit cards we never want to hold a balance anyway because if okay. we're holding a balance whether right. or not you're making a minimum monthly payment it's accruing interest unless it's in an interest-free period so don't hold a balance on your credit cards it will uh, accrue interest and those things that you bought they will end up costing you more money than you initially thought you paid for them so if i were to pay anything off first it's clearly this dog loan that's got to be right what was 986 again what did we put down for that i think that's just the credit card balance oh uh and no. again that's a secured credit card so i don't think the interest is very high that it's secured with a thousand dollar dc cd oh yeah, let me find out uh, yeah what did t tell them because <laughs> i think i mean uh, smart... this this video is on like 1.25 percent speed 1.25 times speed just because i wanted to get through it kind of quickly i've been streaming for 87 minutes we're only 51 minutes into this hour and 44 minute video um i didn't expect it to take this long but i also didn't want to just like steal this content i wanted to talk about it and uh yeah it's fucking brutal this whole thing our financial decision with that credit card because it's a secured card it's financed uh secured with a thousand dollar cd so my understanding is the interest rate was gonna be very very low uh can you bring up the credit card again yeah so now we have a full picture of your debt and where yes. we've gone. Right. What's good is it looks like you're not really, you don't have anything in collections or anything, which is good. No. So, I mean, that's, you know, I feel like that's potentially next steps if we have to drain. Okay. So the $7,732 that's in Ethereum, that, oh, this is just a daily graph. Where was that at some point and you've been withdrawing from it to survive? Yeah. For, at, at the beginning of the year, if you see in the documentary in February, this was 30,000, but I've had to withdraw from this it. This year. Yeah. 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 And, and again, if this was a 401k, it'd be considerably harder to have tapped that money when I needed it. Oh my God, bro. But if it was a 401k, it wouldn't be at risk of falling to like very low amounts of money at any time. Like the way he tries to justify holding his money in crypto investments is just, it's none of it is justified. Do not put large amounts of money that you intend to use at a later time in a risky investment. Like I don't know shit about finances at all, but like, just don't, don't do that. Oh, well, well, I, it would have certainly been more secure and I wouldn't have lost 75% of it overnight. You know? Yeah, bro. Like the call is coming from inside the house boogie. This is so rough, man. Oh, but over the years, if you were putting money into this uh, solo 401k instead of this, you would have been saving a lot of taxes anyway. Sure. Tax benefits with that. Now I wouldn't want you to withdraw and take penalties from that anyway. Taking out loans against it. Wouldn't want you to do that either. But I think, I think a lot of it, we're going to create your budget. But what is very clear if we're doing $900 a month eating out in different forms, we could pay these debts off very quickly. So my interest charge for this is $19.59 for a $1,000 budget, for a $1,000 balance. So what's that come out to? One second. 24%. Well, then I'm paying that off immediately. Yeah, that's what I'd pay off immediately because one- 24% interest on a credit card. That's fucking brutal, dude. That's just not fun at all. Pay it off by not eating out for literally a single- I don't even know how brutal it is. I don't understand anything. I'm a very foolish man, but it's it's not good. It's not a good thing. Then how much is left on the on the dog loan? The dog loan we're sitting at about three thousand four hundred forty-eight. So and the, the bed is also three thousand two hundred nineteen. Can you bring up credit karma again? Because what I can see is yeah. the bed interest rate. Right. Because I can also again, you know how they got me on the bed. It's number one is medically required. Yeah. Um. And then secondly, you know, I'm like I, I can't afford to pay for this in cash, so I have mm -hmm. to get it. Um. And Usually a lot of a lot of beds though you can get zero percent. As you said, I did for like six months or something I think. well in that case you figure out what's the minimum monthly payment required to pay it off in six months right. but of course i mean you, you tell me i don't know i just i pulled the trigger i found i found one you know president's day sell whatever don't look at this you have outstanding approval odds on two credit cards and three personal loans oh i would never take out another yeah please yeah. please don't this please guy don't. he would never get a loan on something that he doesn't need to get a, he would never get an extra credit card it's impossible he's just he's not that guy he gets what's going on he, he understands finance on a high level we don't need you to have to come back on. Nope. The next time I have you on, I want it because you've paid off. I know I'm so mean. I, I feel like this is a very mean live stream. And I understand if people don't have like, 
I don't know. Like, like, I'm not saying that anybody should dislike somebody just because I dislike them, but I have a very long history with Boogie. I've consumed a ton of content, interviews, live streams, podcasts with him. I, I, I have a lot of reasons to not give him the benefit of the doubt on things. So if I seem meaner than you would expect, I just, it's hard. I'm a fucking hater when it comes to this shit. I can't even lie. Give me credit for one thing. I keep I keep it paid if I can if it's at all humanly possible. Like if, if a bill is due, the bill gets paid. No, I obviously no. not the credit cards. Well, but but I mean, like the loan pay, the, the loan payments get made. How can I give you that, that due? Nothing's though. defaulted at least. I can't be, right? I can't give you that credit that's though. Right. If if there's that's one right. of the if one of any of the things are not being paid, I can't give you the credit of making the payments. I'm see sorry. that see that and I think maybe uh, again one of the reasons I pat myself on the back for this and why you never would is because growing up we had things repossessed all the time. Cars repossessed, yeah. televisions repossessed, furniture repossessed because everything was bought on credit, right? Yeah. And so that was such a commonplace. I feel so happy and secure that I can pay my bills. I feel so happy and secure. You can. That and that's good. I mean, he can't pay his bills, but like it is good that he hasn't had anything repossessed because like this is territory where shit just gets worse and worse. Like there is a cliff. Like I know it seems like things are really really fucking bad for Boogie right now, but there is a cliff that he can fall off where it all gets way worse. Like right now he is just by thin margins holding everything together but it's november december these are the highest income months for youtubers and he had this documentary coincide with the november pay period so like he made really good money these past two months the beginning of 2024 is gonna be everything for boogie if he can't pull it together and like i want to say like get like 150 percent or 200 percent of the views that he's getting right now, it's going to be nightmaresville very soon. No, they are getting paid. I'm paying the my credit medical. card. That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. It's not finding the interest. Do you have the app for it? Do you know that? I do. I think. Oh, if you have the app for it, we can I think it's it. straight through sleep number. Maybe I think this one was 0% if I'm not mistaken, buddy, if no, if, if four of these bad debts, I'm considering the house a good debt. If the other four bad debts, bad, just absolute death debt was out of your life. Yeah. It lowers your risk profile immensely. And like, uh, yeah, somebody in the chat saying, I think you're being charitable. You somewhat empathize with Boogie at times. Uh, I, d I empathize with the position that he's in. Like, I don't personally like Boogie2988, but I don't want anybody else that might be in a situation like him to think that like, oh, I fucking hate you. You're so stupid for making those financial decisions. Look at this. Look. Like, I have had financial struggles. Like, I get that it happens to people. I don't like Boogie, and I don't like the way that he lies, but the financial stuff on its own, I'm not just going to bully him about that because it's easily something that could happen to me. Maybe not everything, maybe not, not these specific circumstances, but these things happen to people and not everybody that they happen to like deserves it you know it lowers your minimum monthly payments immensely well that's what that's where i want to get that's what i'm trying to do yeah uh, but it's going to take some things that i'm concerned you're you might not be willing to do to be completely honest but i mean that's up to you we'll, we'll talk about that and you, well there's another know. financial plan we'll get into in a minute i think you're oh, you have your own plan. yeah he's got a financial plan i don't even remember what it is i've watched this multiple times and i yeah you you're gonna laugh when i say it though but and your audience will laugh. Um, well, I would also just rather you be like financially like safe than give me a good segment. Well, it's right? both. It's both. In, in the, okay. It's both. Everything is content in Boogie's mind. It's actually super fucking sad. Like, and he's been doing this YouTube thing for a long time. I haven't been doing it as long as him, so I don't have that exact same content brain. But the content brain is a disease. Like, I really want to like anybody that's trying to be a content creator out there. If you start mixing up, like, what is a good idea with what would make good content, and you're dealing with things in your life, it can go downhill so fucking quickly. You're a human being, man. Yeah, of course, yeah. So, the spike makes this a little hard, but I across the income sources you gave me, we are having an average of $4,269.96. Now, that's right, that's right about where it is, yeah. Question, yeah. are you setting 30% aside for taxes? I can't. Right. Yeah. What are you going to do in... Uh, uh, what, did you, what did you do these last few quarterlies when quarterly payments? Uh, okay. I literally can't afford to make quarterly payments, so I'm paying in lump sums at the beginning of the year most of the time. Okay. And I also do this. I've, I don't, I'm have i not going to get too deeply into it, but, like, this is a thing that happens. Like, people make more money than they, uh, or make less money than they expected to, and they're just paying all their bills, and they forget that, like, tax time comes around and shit. And, yeah, it leads to a lot of problems, but, like, um, it's weird. The whole, like, making money without being taxed on it initially is a weird thing, especially if, like, you have a lot of expenses. So, like, I get this sort of thing. 
There's penalties. For Even that. though it seems like completely fucking stupid, like it's it's just so weird when you're like making money and you're not getting taxed on it, and then things go downhill and you're like, oh shit, man, there's like this pile of shit that's uh that's fucking me up. Okay. If you can't afford to do them quarterly, how are we gonna do them annually with penalties? Uh, I think this year I'll end up having to set up a payment plan with the U.S. government. What'd you do for last year? We haven't talked about it much. Um, it was a very reasonably it was a fairly reasonable sum. It was paid? No. Is it on a payment plan? I owe about $2,200. Okay. Hmm? Did he set up? I don't know if Boogie set up the payment plan. If you owe the IRS money, set up a payment plan with them. Don't just like hope for it to go away because um, that's just not a good idea. You don't really want to do that with the IRS, but like set up a payment plan. They will deal with you. Just set it up so that it's there and then pay it. Like, don't just like, oh, maybe this will work itself out. Maybe I can pay it off in a lump sum. Just set up the payment plan and deal with it that way. This way, like, you're good with the IRS and you're on the same page. It's a very important piece of this debt. It is. It's interesting because the episode that's coming out before yours was another YouTuber who did not pay his taxes. Which one? Uh, Darkside Phil. Oh, maybe I should have him on. No, it's a YouTuber that doesn't upload anymore. He got to 100,000 subscribers and then quit. Now, there's only Boo! One... Don't quit. I mean, maybe quit if it's better for your life, but, like, don't don't quit, YouTube. Keep trying to make videos, you know? And I've just been waiting for him to knock on the door and get it solved. Um, but at the beginning of this year, I was not in a position where I could do it. I'm like, I have to make it to the stock drops, and let's see if there's a spike that comes with it, and I'll pay it then. And that's the world we're in now. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, you had 30 in crypto. You could have paid it. I could have, but I knew. I, I looked at... And, and this is a terrible way to live, but this is how I look at it. I can pull this out of crypto now and potentially miss a house payment at the end of the year. Yeah. So I would rather stay in the house until I have to leave it yeah. and, and continue to build equity. And maybe I'll never have to leave it. But if that one financial, if I pull this 2000 and pay the U.S. government, which I know they're patient. I, I owe the money. They are very patient. The U.S. government it, it is so patient. <laughs> they they also, they, this is such a bad assumption. Do not assume that the government is like patient. Like set up the payment plan, start dealing with them, keep communication with the IRS if you ever owe them money. The assumption that they are patient, you're just waiting for them to knock on your door and be like, hey, we're going to take your assets now. Payments. Yeah. Well, but I'll tell you, having had this very similar problem in my 20s with a, a small business really? collapsing yeah, and owing them $1,500 then, they were very eager to work with you. They're like, just give us anything, man. Right? You know, the U.S. government works slow, and believe it or not, they're surprisingly cool when it comes to owing them money. Right. Uh, this is not, like, I'm not going to say that this is not true, but just because you had tax problems in the 90s and it worked out for you and they didn't come beating down your door and taking your assets does not mean that that same thing is going to happen today. This so, is like so boring. I'm sorry that this shit is so fucking boring, but like we have to, I have to watch the whole thing so that I can like take note of, uh, of any lies or inconsistencies. Right now we're just dealing with like boring technical stuff. So maybe I should just let it play out a little bit more. Many people have had different experiences. Just to let you know. Yeah, I've had, no, I, they just sent me up on a, a payment plan. They're literally like, what can you afford? I'm like, well, I'm on disability now. So yeah. what do you think I can afford? Like, can you afford to give up 10% of that? And I'm like, no. I can't give 10% of $850. Mm -hmm. I'm living off of $850. What if they knew right. you were spending $900 a month on fast food? I mean, they probably would uh, be able to not send us the IRS. <laughs> Bro. Oh, Boogie, stop spending money on fast food. Like, I, I'm not even saying you need to be a thin man. I'm not even saying you have to fix everything at once and not overeat. But, like, if you're going to overeat, just buy garbage at Walmart that's cheap. Don't buy fast food that's expensive and also killing you. It's like you can, you don't have to always pick the worst nuclear option of, let me spend extra money on food that's going to kill me. <laughs> yeah, probably not great. I mean, they know. The, no, the government knows, right? They, they have access to my credit card records, right? I'm they just saying know. if there's one they people know. we don't, it's the IRS. That's true. But they know. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've had, uh, not for some to 2,200, but there's been people in the media industry in general who have, you know, not paid taxes. They've gone to jail. If you owe them a significant amount of money, yes. then yes. Yeah. They do not consider 2,000. No, I know. No, but that's all I'm saying is like, well, this isn't all roses and butterflies. The best I can get for you um, on this loan is mm -hmm. that it's 0% for 24 months. Because right? mm -hmm. that's pretty much standard on the website. Yeah, when did you take it out? July. Okay, so we're in the 0% interest period. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's good to know. Or no, June. Oh, okay. Yeah, June. <laughs> Sorry, I was panicking. I was like, because you almost sent me into one. I got it before you. Yeah, so. Does she work? We're working on that. 
Okay. Because that would be, that's, uh, you know, not required to. We're not married, right. you know, anything like that. Uh, if we are married, that's a conversation of what do we need to be as a future? How do we hit financial goals? We might need to work, obviously. The majority of her, everything is taken care of. But the one thing that she's not doing is bringing income in. Yeah. But she's costing pretty much nothing. Going in. How can, this is what I don't understand. So, so he's talking about his girlfriend does not work, which I think like she should try to work because you don't want to be completely dependent on Boogie 2988 for your financial well-being. But uh, it's... Like, one, I think that she should do something to try and make money because it's just a good way to be. Like, yeah, but anyway, he says that she does not cost any money. How does a human being existing not cost any money? Like, she doesn't eat food. She doesn't need any toiletries. She doesn't need clothes or, like, whatever. Everybody knows that, like, existing as a human being costs money. How does his girlfriend not cost a cent for him somehow? Uh, okay, let's capture some of your other things. We have Verizon 222. Do what? The, Verizon 222? Yes, yeah, we got two lines. Oh, yeah. Two lines should not cost this much money for Verizon. I have Verizon. I'm on a family plan. Uh, I don't even know if our full family of like four people costs this much. Are your phones finance? iPads? Mm, Apple Watch? Not iPads, iPads no. Uh, Verizon's expensive. There is, yeah, Verizon's expensive. There is, uh, there was like a $500 balance after trading on that phone on this one. So we're, we are... That that so there was a five. So he said that this phone was free before, and now he's saying there was a five hundred dollar balance after turning on the phone. So I don't know where it said free, but somehow this phone ended up costing him money. Again, zero percent. You're gonna hate it because I mean Verizon is like the best nationwide. But when we just can't afford to live, like Mint Mobile. I don't even know what that is. Ryan Reynolds, Mint Mobile. I don't watch commercials, man. Okay, well check it out, dude. I'll, I'll text you a link. You can be. It can be like thirty bucks a line. Okay, that well, I mean, I'll still have to pay off this phone before I get there. But yes. Oh, oh, so the, uh, wait, yeah, like I said, phone was zero dollars. It, it 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 added up to like there was a balance of four hundred and twenty dollars. What what is this life? I, I do not, I can't, I fucking can't do this shit. The phone was free. Oh, uh, it worked out to actually, it was like four hundred, five hundred dollars. How five hundred dollars is so far from zero dollars. One, it is infinitely more than zero dollars, and two. It's a fuckload of money. Like $500, like you could do so many things. Like why the fuck is that a non-issue in your mind? Spread across 24 months. <laughs> but it's 0% interest. Okay, so it's $500 spread across, across 24 months. But then his phone bill is still somehow $222. Oh, but we can't switch to another carrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there goes saving $150. All right. Uh, car insurance? Yeah. Yeah, got to have. Got to have car insurance. You, um, got, you got to have car insurance. Car insurance. The YouTuber, uh, the other one I was just talking about who didn't pay his taxes does not have car insurance. Very bad. You need car insurance. Your life could be fucking ruined if you don't have insurance on your car. So have that. I didn't for the first 30 years of my life. That's not good. Yeah, that was not good. Do you have, uh... He didn't drive for the first 16 years of his life. Like Boogie does this a lot where like he will describe the amount of time that something has been happening for as his entire lifespan. Like he was saying that like, I don't know, it was something about like, you know, having sex or whatever. And he was like, yeah, well, like it has been going that way for the past 50 years. I don't know. This is a fucking nitpick. This is way too specific. I'm so sorry. Uh, 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 what was the last Oh. I also just want to thank everybody out there for being here because it is making it easier to get through this video. It's I've like had to play Minecraft while watching this video every time I've tried to watch because it's just very hard to exclusively deal with this. So thank you to everybody in the chat. Yeah, 775 is your minimum monthly for insurance. That's yeah. fucking brutal. That sucks, man. I just, I hate to see it. That's insurance. Blue Cross Blue Shield. Keeps me alive. Unfortunately, uh, for them... They are losing a lot of money on this. <laughs> I can tell you that. They are spending way more than I'm giving them at this point. Yeah. Like 15 years ago, you may have not been able to get health insurance at this point. I couldn't. Yeah. If it wasn't for uh, the Obama administration that made it possible for me to purchase insurance as a self employed person, I would never had access to health insurance. Okay. Um, so, how many people do you have to buy groceries for, like every day type thing? Me and her. Just you two. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but we do have somebody that, uh, again, will we'll cook for free as long as they're eating. Um, so we do take advantage of that. So generally means we're cooking for three most of the times. Okay. Yeah. Well, I would cooking is free. Like I, I don't know. Like I've seen big people. I've seen huge people still cooking for themselves. They bring a chair into the kitchen and they cook. Like 
I don't know. It's I don't know. I, Boogie should be cooking for himself. He should be working towards doing his own chores. In fact, like I mentioned this in a previous video, doing chores is actually something they recommend to people as a way to both be productive and get exercise at the same time. So the more things that Boogie starts expanding into as far as doing his own chores would actually help him. But he's so committed to this idea that he can't do them that he will not allow himself to expand into that world at all. I'm going to go to the two with some cooking, getting yeah. done. Um, so what we did on our grocery store website, our local grocery store, ATB, you can probably do this on Walmart, I assume. We created like a meal prepping thing for each week, uh, 2,500 calories a day per person plus snacks. Um, uh, we sorted the recipes for what we needed for each meal by I should cheapest. Point out, I should point out that when we eat at home, we eat, we, we eat more sandwiches than we eat anything else. Okay. Yeah. Sandwiches are expensive. Like, uh, like, not to say that sandwiches have to be expensive, like, you can buy the right things, but if you're buying cold cuts right now, like, 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 lunch meat turkey, lunch meat uh, roast beef, salami, cheese, they're extremely expensive. If you look at the price per pound for cold cuts versus, like, raw chicken, it's not even close. It's like $12 a pound for cold cuts where I'm at, and it's like $3 a pound for, like, raw chicken, so, like... I would not fuck with cold cuts right now if you're on a budget. Well, either way, sort the ingredients by cheap. And then do like a pickup order for it, which mm -hmm. can be free depending on the store. Um, and that way you're not going through the aisles, you're not picking up everything. And we had for a single person with snacks and desserts, 2,500 calories a day, good eating, 250 bucks a month. That's comfortably. incredible. That's incredible. Comfortably, but most people aren't, you know, willing to get into the nitty gritty of it. You know, name of brands yeah, yeah, yeah. and eating a unique meal every day. But, and I want everyone to be able to do that. I want everyone I'll to be, be able to do that. With you. When every, we can't afford it. Everything sorry. in our house is great value. 100% of the time. Great um, value for life, baby. Because um, number one, it's a huge waste of money. The food doesn't taste different. The the, the products aren't any better. Um, and secondly, we're in Walmart country, right? Like So yeah. uh, I, if you're not by the local brand, you know, you're well, kind of I'm a trader in our area. But yeah, at least that. We're you're kind getting... of a trader. He's so weird. He takes these weird stances. I don't understand. Nah, yeah. All I'm saying is I can get you guys 450 bucks a month in groceries for you too. With aggressive meal prepping. We could. That sounds very reasonable. Yeah. Now, I have something called the toilet paper fund. This is just whatever else is needed to survive at the household. All right, so I'm just going to skip over this. 250 bucks there. Sure. Medical, on a monthly basis, medications. What is coming out on average? About 1500 For health insurance and medications. Oh, okay. Not health insurance. Uh, just and, and now okay. we're doing so. just medications. Well, I guess I could subtract those. Yeah. Health insurance. Uh, so, two, so 700. Wait, I'm just going to look something up in my second window. Dollars. Okay, so 600 if we average? Yeah. Okay. Let me figure out your debt now monthly payments. Including mortgage. Oh, shit. Actually, I'm going to do... Let's do mortgage separately. Okay, so meds, $600. I'm just taking note of that real quick. Including property taxes and insurance and all that good stuff. And did we get through utilities on this or not? I can't remember. Uh, I did not see you... Uh, oh. They should have been in some of the screenshots. Um, here. Here it is. I think water payment is in here. So this is this water, gas... Water, oh, electric. water, electricity. Oh, sorry. No, sure. that is water and trash removal. And that's it. That's what the city charges. It sucks. Okay, so you have uh, electricity on the side. Uh, electricity is a whole other bill, which you okay. should have. See, well. Utilities. So, There's utility stuff happening. Sorry, I'm trying to find a quote from the documentary. So this is just this is just trash. Yeah, and our, it's, our city is highway robbery. It's insane. That's trash and water. Do they compensate it with low property taxes at least? Like, yeah, we get hammered a, with aggressive. Our pro yeah, our property taxes are better. Okay, how much uh, how much in electricity and gas then? Um, depends on the month. Yeah, give uh, me your average. I, they should be printed out for the last month here. I, I I think I sent them to you. I think the last month in electricity was two fifty. Yep. Uh, it's a little more than that, but yep. And then what was the other one you were asking about? Gas, I think, comes out to in the winter close to 150. In the summer, sorry, this is so boring. I, I apologize. Like he has to, like Caleb has to do this for his, uh, for his stream here because he's or for his uh, podcast because he's trying to get into all the details. But the utility nitty gritty is really just not. But I'm just trying to. Uh, so from from the documentary, which Boogie claims that like the numbers were fudged on, it says that he has seven hundred fifty dollars in doctor's visits per month. Which like at the time, and a lot of people in my comments section were saying like that makes sense or whatever. Like m medication or uh, doctor's visits are expensive, but here they don't list any doctor's visits. Like I'm, it's weird that it didn't come up anywhere in the finances um and i Down like spoiler alert system. i've seen the rest of this it does not come up so it's weird that it was such a thing in the documentary and it seems to be a thing that boogie harps on as being a, a major source of costs but it does not come up in this audit uh, so it's called it 100 and then um what was the other one water sorry, okay i'm sorry i gotta I get know, through the yeah, utilities might be because we don't know yet yep 
you have this extra six hundred fifty three dollars could clear you not clear you up but it, it would so the health the health is just for his insurance this this health section here is just for his health insurance then he's got six hundred dollars in meds um but in the documentary it separated his health insurance from his doctor's visits um as part of his budget per month helps a lot yeah um I ballpark, and in, in like I've said publicly, uh, right around seven thousand for like minimum payments across everything. Is that about what close to what you got? Uh, I don't know just yet. I just want to I want to make sure where we got everything that you're required to have. Guess how much do we think? I'm Bills are boring. Like okay, we're still in utilities world. Oh no no no, this is gas for a car is eighty dollars yeah, that you are required to take care of on a minimum monthly basis. There were subscriptions like uh, stream Streamyard and stuff. Oh yeah, it's like a twenty five dollars subscription. Okay yeah, like subscriptions. Nice. I've had to take oh. a lot of road trips. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I bought well, it. Twelve thousand is nothing. I bought it with less than a thousand miles on it. That's incredible. Yeah. So he doesn't drive around a lot, and yet he goes to the gas station all the time. Like, once again, I cannot prove that it's snacks and drinks, but, yo, I'm a fat fuck that's out in the world. Anytime you see a gas station on my fucking shit, it may be like cigarettes or something like that, but it's, uh, you know, a lot of times it's drinks and snacks. It might be wrong. It might be closer to 18 if, I, if I'm ballparking it. She could go check, but I think it's, it's under 20 for sure. I'm happy about that, though. It doesn't mean we have to worry about anything two major happening soon. Mm -hmm. Now they say uh, one of the reasons I bought this car is like all the YouTube reviewers said this specific year and that specific model, they said at well over 150,000 miles before you even start to see issues. So, and I knew it would take a lifetime for me to put that on it. Even with trips uh, like This is not true. Like I like, it might be true with like perfect maintenance, but there is never a guarantee that a car is going to last 150,000 miles with uh, no issues. Like that, maybe like there are cars that are way more reliable than others, but issues can always happen. Cars like as useful as they are, I fucking love cars. Um, I have like, you know, a budget vehicle. I fucking love it, but bad things can happen at any time. Like this, you know, for business and stuff, I, I, I'll never put that much mileage on it. 5,856 in order to survive. So a little under. Mm. But that's because I think we're throwing in a little less wants. You said in your budget you had like 900 for food or something. Yep. It's like uh, if we get rid of wants. No, it was 900 for fast food. It was 900 for outside of the grocery store. Like it, 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 I wish we had gotten into more detail. Like I know that like Caleb, you know, he does his thing. But I, for this, maybe it's just because I'm specifically obsessed with Boogie. I wish we had gotten, like, everything fucking itemized, like, tallied up. Actually look at not hypothetically what costs are, but, like, what did he actually spend in the last month? Only just basic survival, which is what you should be on. Because, again, we still bring in $1,600 less on a monthly basis yep. than we need to survive. Yep. Which... And we're real close to that being zero. Yeah. So now, I do have one thing we haven't included here. Oh, okay. Um, and it is the other backup plan that I've had, which is yeah. so incredibly stupid. Go Why? On. So this is fucking so dumb. I hate it. I hate when he does this. Like, Boogie calls himself stupid or, like, says that things that he's done are stupid, but then he also has plans and he says that they are stupid and that it's a bad idea, but then he will go through with doing it. So it's just like all sympathy and like, oh man, bad things have happened to you. They kind of go out the door when somebody's like, this is a bad decision, this is a bad decision, and then they just do the bad decision. Um, I started playing a card game called Man of the Gathering back in 1994. Yeah. I'm oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Purchase a lot of cards at a time. Yeah, that this, they yeah. are worth a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have cards that have been my backup plan for the entirety of my life. Right. Yeah. Since 1994, I'm like, you know, these cards continue to accrue value. The bottom will fall out eventually. Here we are, 31 years later, and they've gone nowhere but up. I generally get about 70% of the value of what a card's worth. Uh, and so, for example, I, I was gifted a card for nine years ago for my 40th birthday. Uh, they paid $80 for it. It's currently worth about $2,700. Um, mm -hmm. So I do have additional assets can you give me conservative value of your entire collection conservative I mean, extremely conservative yes, would please. be if i bulk sold it tomorrow yeah 50k but my so he has he he's saying that he has 50k in bulk sell magic cards like so if he sold everything there's 50k ready to go like these it's just the financial life of this man is so weird like there's He's like, he's broke, he's not broke. It's like, everything is so fucking strange. I don't, I, I feel like I, I leave this video, like when we eventually do get to the end of it seven years from now, with like, I feel like I still don't know what's going on with Boogie's finances at all. My plan is to continue to do what I've been doing over the last year, which is sell it periodically survive. to survive, right? Because um, with the exception of, you know, the COVID bubble hitting this market, 
Um, and I wouldn't have sold during COVID because I didn't need the money, right? Yeah. Um, other than the COVID bubble bursting, these cards have continued to maintain value. That's a good point. Somebody mentioned in the documentary, didn't they talk about some magic cards were going down? Yeah, there's like, like generally things go up, like the video game market has gone up, like this, that will go up. But just because it has historically gone up doesn't mean that like you're not going to hit the bubble. Like very recently, I think uh, Carl Jobs was talking about this. There was this whole thing with like sealed video games were going like insane evaluations during COVID. And then like a couple couple years passed and the bubble just completely burst on it and things were like dropping like to be like five percent of their previous value so none of this shit is ever guaranteed um so i sell them as i as i go now i'm learning today from you that i should absolutely go home sell ten thousand dollars worth would. and throw it at these high interest loans they're probably not appreciating 25 percent. sell the cards and get rid of your debts that's a good plan no yeah. certainly not certainly not because the crypto and this is it's in crypto so one, I would just have this in a high yield savings account anyway, but it's going to last five more months. It's so funny that like Caleb, he, he reads Boogie here that Boogie is not willing to part with these crypto, with these crypto. Like he's saying, like, I would just have that in a high yield savings account. And that's where it should be. Like it can accrue a little bit of interest and make a tiny amount of money for you, but at least it's safe. If your backup plan is in crypto, it's just fucking... And same thing with the magic cards. Like, the magic cards, as weird as it is, are probably a better, like, more stable investment than crypto. But it's still, like, you're just choosing to hold all of your money in, like, this very risky asset. Yep. If it stays this value, you yep. never know what can happen with crypto. Five more months. So And I wasn't lying. It's, it's gone up since I printed it. It's, it's, right it's gone up. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be fine. Crypto is going to save me. I made a couple bucks. I would tell that it's on the climb. Do not invest. Do not invest. Uh, invest, but not in that. Not in crypto. <laughs> uh, okay. 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 So with the bad debt that we have, this is what I would do today. 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 Um, tomorrow. Because <laughs> you get home tomorrow. But yeah. high interest, bad debt that, including, I'm, I'm putting the IRS in there, man. Because it's about to get to be like death interest. Yeah, they'll, they'll knock on the door soon. Yeah, and I, I would rather knock on their door before they knock on yours. That's right. Yeah, don't say, wait for the don't wait for the IRS to come to your house. Never do this. Never fucking do this. Oh, sixteen thousand three hundred seven dollars and eighty eight cents. How much? Sixteen thousand three hundred seven dollars and eighty eight cents. That's pretty doable. That wipes out IRS. It wipes out credit card. It wipes out. So that's the amount that like uh, Caleb would have him sell in magic cards and stuff in order to pay off debts. The bad. It wipes out the car. And, it wipes out. and I, I honestly, I don't know what this guy's uh, credentials are. I was looking at his YouTube info. I'm not sure if he's like a CPA or like a certified financial advisor. I have absolutely no idea. The dog. Loan, not the dog. But the car. You, in your situation, not having a car debt, a, a leverage on a depreciating asset, lowers your risk profile immensely. Okay, extremely it's stupid question. Yeah. It's my understanding that I should maintain some loan to continue to build credit. Sure. It's so because I, again, I do think relocating, selling my existing home mm -hmm. and buying a cheaper one is something that will still be in my future, even with this. So and you'll so still have your If mortgage. I were to keep a loan, is the mortgage count? Oh, absolutely. Is that the one they're looking for? Well, they're, they're looking for everything. They're looking for diversification. They're looking for age. They're looking for low balances. They're looking for on-time payments. What I would do in your situation is uh, obviously keep the mortgage because it's a low rate. I'm it's so great. bored. Like, this is probably, like, hella good advice, but, like, I just, I want, I want Boogie to get caught in more traps. It's like... Uh, it's like, I don't, I really want to emphasize, I don't want bad things to happen to Boogie, but I do want Boogie to be called on all the things that are currently happening and all the, the lies that he's making. So like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of getting like, together yeah. ones. Even if your credit score takes a hit because the age goes down, it doesn't matter anyway, because right now your credit score in what exists within it of taking out debt is taking advantage of you. You're not taking advantage of it. Mm -hmm. So there's really no purpose right now of you like shooting for that good credit score. Cause this is, you know, what I would do, potentially, you're not a credit card person. Right. Like, you can't manage it. You're not paying the payments. But if it is that important to you, the one thing I would might consider, if you can prove to yourself over the course of six months that you only put gas on your credit card and you pay off the entire balance every month. That's smart. I will concede that you're allowed to do that. And that will at least, that in the mortgage, man, you'll be in the 700s credit score wise. Okay. Should be chill. Okay. It should be chill. You might get a hit in a bit. For a bit because your overall credit age is going to go down because some accounts are going to close for paying them off well right. also everything could be like i don't like boogie has a lot of equity in his house so there is like value existing out there um but like if he doesn't take that out or he doesn't like utilize that in some way like these 
All these bills are going to catch up with him like very quickly if he doesn't right, make the right moves. But honestly, with your credit card getting paid off, think even with those, I wouldn't be surprised if it jumped to about 700 anyway. Yeah, because uh, one of the main... I, I debated even talking about this, and I don't know if it'll make the final cut or not, but one of the major reasons I want to make sure that I can take out a loan is because there is a very real chance of a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. And I, for the thing that I'm dealing with, you have to pay up front. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. No. Well, of course, obviously. I mean, death over life. Life comes first. Yeah. So um, I, I, I get your fear around that. Um, and, yeah, that and that makes some sense. Like, I do think that Boogie has, like, a tendency to, like, evoke these very, like, life or death scenarios to sometimes get out of like difficult topics or like make himself seem like more sympathetic or whatever but i do think that this is a real thing like you do want to have a good credit score just in case something like really bad happens to you and you need to take on some medical debt like i, I would say that that's, that's probably a real thing i think your credit score again will actually be in a better place because right now what's holding it back looking at your credit is a high credit card balance you know, you want to be under that 30% utilization. If we just have you... So but that's, credit, that's not to say that he's doing everything well with his uh, with his credit right now. Gas but he, he has maintained a good credit score, so, yeah. Bounce every month. And can, having the mortgage consistent, um, you're going to have a you're gonna have a good score. Yeah, okay. Like, are we talking 800s? Mm -hmm. No, but, like, you'll be in the same I didn't way. even know that credit scores could go into the 800s. Fuck. <laughs> so, and I think when we're looking at this minimum structure, yeah. I think my income... I mean, income in the last 30 days has been enough to cover that. Yes. Um, and this YouTube podcast, alone, right? right? Yeah. This, this podcast is going to start paying out. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, oh, just, like, yeah. I forgot about the LawCal Live podcast. He's anticipating that he'll make like 2K a month from LawCal Live. Uh, that could go up. It could go down. Um, I, I do think that the LawCal Live podcast, which I might cover at some point, it has potential to be really big, but it's got a lot of volatile assets boogie being one of them keemstar wings there's a lot of things that could go wrong with it in, in addition to just it possibly getting boring so it's not really a guarantee of income but it is an opportunity that profitability in the third episode that's incredible right um my cut is small it's 25 percent, right but i own 25 percent of this thing and i foresee being able to reach these minimums throughout at least the, the rest of next year i don't know if it'll get better than that um, but I think I think I'm in a position right now after the doc coming out and this podcast and everything else. I think I'm in a position where I reach these minimums. I you won't know, have much. You know, the, I don't know if the documentary is still relevant to Boogie's success anymore. Like the weird thing about Boogie with like all this notoriety that he's gained with like the documentary going on this podcast, for example. I don't know if Boogie is actually able to capitalize on it well because he's made this commitment on his main channel or his only YouTube channel that he actually posts on to not talking about drama and stuff. So he's not he's not doing the milking on his main channel that would actually benefit him the most from these situations, at least short term. That's all I'm saying is short term. So I think that all the like financial benefit from the documentary, it's pretty much dried up at this point. If I had to like guess... Um, so I don't know if it's going to get better from this point out as far as his revenue on his main channel. Room after that. And it'd be a really oh. good idea to pay all of this down. You need to tomorrow. Yeah, right. Exactly. As soon as I get home. But you know, the minimums. Don't I wonder home. if he did this, this was released a few days ago. It probably was recorded way before that. I wonder if he actually paid off this stuff. Then spend an additional 900 going out to eat and then all whatever else, you know, yeah. the extra yeah. unnecessities are unnecessities right now. If we can't afford it, That's we fair. currently can't. That's so fair. what is required through again, a anonymous call center job you know something that pays minimum wage oh my god i forgot about the job thing oh we're gonna get into the job conversation and this is fucking brutal it is so hard to watch uh building that uh podcast or abandoning the twitch and everything like that and fully focusing on re-engaging youtube whatever it might be man that brings you to at least i mean that's been the plan over the last 30 days you, you literally what i've been doing over the last 30 days since this documentary dropped and you can see it's paying off Right? Like, it's uh, paying off because that was the giant spike from the documentary. Like, that's not a maintainable plan. You're not even, like, milking the documentary for everything that it's worth. So why would it get better from this point out when we are getting further and further away from the documentary? My numbers continue to grow. My income is continuing to grow. I, 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 I'm doing exactly that. You know, all of this ancillary stuff is ancillary. It's, it's, uh, I have it all in a, a link dump, and other than live streaming once a week just for the fun of it because I enjoy doing it, I don't live stream. I, don't, I yeah. put my time where the cash cow is, and that cash cow is YouTube's ad revenue. And my favorite part about that is I'm not making money off the back of my audience. They don't have to buy a T-shirt. Mm -hmm. They don't have to engage with the sponsor. They don't have to ch buy a channel membership. They don't have to donate anything on Twitch. 
All they have to do is put the video on, click it, watch it, and I make money. That's I also like this. I also really like this as a business model. Like, it's so nice to be able to, like, make YouTube ad revenue and know that, like, hey, nobody had to pay. The only people that are paying for that are Google and the advertisers. Like, it is a really cool way to, like, make money where you know that, like, this is just coming from somebody else that is not my audience. Simple as that. A lot of the criticisms uh, that I personally saw, and you can refute them if you wish, this is just, there's too much information online. Sure, yeah. It's impossible. So, but a lot of what I saw is, again, like, uh, the pity party, sympathy, feast over the last few years. Sure. And maybe that turns the people off, and maybe it's to get people it to It definitely turns people off. The money, I'm not sure. Are we done with that? Yeah, I, I've been done with Oh, that we're super done with the pity party. I will never try and garner sympathy from the public ever again. This is me, Stephen Williams, Boogie2988. I am making a pledge to never attempt to make people bad for me, feel bad for me again. And it's been happening. I've been, oh man, I'm so improved from where I was before. Oh, good. So it was just- I learned very quickly my decision to talk about my finances last year. Mm -hmm. That that is not how I'm going to get out of this hole. Uh, <laughs> You're talking about your finances right now, dude. Oh, I think he's talking about when he like asked, actually asked people for money. Uh, I, I cannot, nor should I, want my existing audience or my pre-existing audience to want to dig me out of this hole. Now, yeah, you should not want that. You're right. It's a whole other thing if I create content that they want to pay for, right? Yes. If I give yes. value, you value. give value. Most YouTubers give value. Mm -hmm. That was the thing that I was missing. I give no value. Everybody in here is stupider for having watched this stream from my video last year. I, I asked for something. I'm actually it. soaking value out of all of I'm leeching every single person out there for every bit of value. You're getting nothing out of this. Nothing in exchange. That was the idiocy of it. Um, and, and I'm at a point where I can't ask for anything up front from my audience, nor yeah. should I, nor do I want to, right? I have to deliver a product yeah. that they enjoy, and if they enjoy it, then they can catch me on the back end. True. They, That's true. So choose That's to. pretty true. And I don't blame a single person who chooses never to, to do that, right? If you said Boogie's burnt that bridge, I fully understand and respect that yeah. because I don't know. The thing I think I learned from the internet more than anything, uh, I was playing, oh, I don't know. I heard it called, I'm just a small bean the other day. Do you know if you heard this right? Um, growing up for me, it was, you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? I was being Jerry Smith from Rick and Morty. He's compared himself to Jerry Smith from fucking uh, Rick and Morty so many times. I don't even know the character reference, but it's just so funny that he's like, I'm a, TV show guy. You're familiar with that character. It's a character that was intentionally pathetic in the hopes that other people wouldn't harm them. What I've learned... You continue to do this, Boogie. You can say that, like, it isn't this way or that, like, you know that it is this way, but when you continue to do it, that knowledge that it is that way is... It, it's it's valueless. Very quickly. It's exactly as valueless as this live stream. That. Uh, no, very quickly, but uh, I've learned harshly is that when you make yourself out to be a victim, the people that like to victimize people will choose you to victim. True. I'm curious. Uh, do you find yourself throughout your life uh, playing justification games? Certainly. Yes, he does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, it just might be something worth escaping in the future is just instead of trying to justify like every last uh, last thing, a reason for everything happening, reason why I did this, a reason why uh, I made this choice is because of this whole winded thing of a character I'm trying to do and all this stuff. Well, in Instead therapy, of just justification. Well, well, in therapy, we learn why we do things, right? Um, I know why. I, mm -hmm. During the Frank Castle. Like, Boogie might be one of the few people who therapy has made worse. Like, it's... Like, there are, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I do not want to shit on therapy at all. I think therapy is very valuable uh, if you use it in the right way, but I do think that there are some times where somebody like Boogie can go into therapy and they can get all the explanations and understanding of why certain things happen and then just choose to harp on those things as the ultimate excuse that can never be defeated of why certain things are the way they are and why that will not change. Uh, let me just rewind one sec. Well, in therapy, we learn why we do things, right? Um, I know why. I, mm -hmm. During the Frank Castle situation, when a man was battering down my door, calling me a, uh, the N-word and an F-A-G-G-O-T and, and all that, I know why I opened that door. Yeah. Right? I did it because I wanted to stand up for myself. Mm -hmm. I did it because you shouldn't be on my yeah. That was fucking stupid as shit, bro. I did it because this is a transgression. Does the law care? No, it's not an excuse. I broke the law. I pay, but it's important to understand why I did these things. Yeah, and but I, it is like there is value in understanding why you did things. But with Boogie, there is no value. Like it's it's not that there is no value. It's just that he does not utilize any of that value of that knowledge because he just uses the reason that things happen as 
oh, this is just a piece of information. It's not actually like utilized to change anything. Justify is different than no, it doesn't justify why. it at all, right? Okay. I, this is why I did it. I need to have an understanding of why I did it so that I hopefully won't do something like that ever again. Well, the only right. reason I ask if that's been a part of your life yeah. is because I don't want us to be justifying things in the future. Oh, you absolutely. Yeah. And in terms of, like, I really want you to get to a good place, man. I, the minimum you need to bring in in order to live your minimum needs with current debts. Get rid of the debts is different. Actually, we're, we're paying off Let's the Let's talk debts. about what happens when we get rid of the debts. Yeah, yes, exactly. We, except for the mortgage. Sure. Then we need $5,203 to survive on a monthly basis. That means you need to bring in 10000 uh, ten thousand four hundred seven dollars on a monthly basis uh, for like recommended budgeting purposes. Okay. Recommended. It's obviously going to be tighter than that. Oh, we do not get to the job thing yet. When does the job happen? Get there if you can get there again. That's great because I mean that's one hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars a year. Ten thousand a month. Yes, it's because your needs. We want to shoot for that being about fifty percent. That is difficult. That's usually more difficult in places like New York City or L. A. Where rent's going right, to be sure. It's, it's more... a little easier in Arkansas. Yes, maybe not Northwest Arkansas, but still. Yeah, I bro, in Northwest. He's like he like plays up this thing of Northwest Arkansas like so hard. Like, bro, Northwest. It's fucking. It's like Brooklyn, man. It's going to be on top of the world. Like, I get that. Like, it is like it's raising in value, but like he seems to just really want to like. Uh, you know, beat that point home. Speak for that yeah. place specifically, but that's typically what we try to shoot for. 50% going to our needs, 30% to our wants, 20% for investing. Sure, okay. Now, if I were in your shoes, is to shoot for that $10,400 as quick as I can, doing whatever it is, whether it's in content creation, whether it's a drive through work, whether it's anonymous call center. And I know, I know, we, we already talked about having the name out there and just, you know, different things. But even if, again, we can try the more anonymous thing or applying for jobs like it's a full-time job, right. might be a consideration. If, the, if, if things don't play out, maybe we give it, this is going to last for another five months if no more income brings in. Sure. I say if we hit there and we're, we've no longer gotten to the place where we can, you know, survive. Right. Obviously, liquidating cards might be the option then, but we're, at that point, I think we've proved this is not working Right. at that point. I say we try to scrape together any and every job we can, and we're not above any and every job at that point. Right. I, I, I think a lot of people have this idea, and I, I get that the documentary definitely painted this picture, right? I think a lot of people don't understand what I'm willing to do to survive. But I hope we that- do. We understand. We've seen exactly what you're willing to do to survive. You try to make more content. You try to live stream more. Sometimes you end up asking people for money. Sometimes you do strange stuff to try and get some money. Like we, you actually have not been put in the position where you like need, need, need more money very, very quickly. Like he has not, like he talks about all these things, but he has not actually been like at risk for losing his house. Like he mentions earlier here, like we know what you're willing to do. It's not the craziest stuff on the planet. It's not absolutely everything. That you know that I literally drove across the country with an injury. Yeah. To, to be here to do this. He drove across the country with an injury to be at this interview right now. Right. Yeah, you did. So yeah. I'm willing to eat as much. I, and and I believe that he did that, but like, that's not, I don't know. To, to do this, right? Are you willing to stop eating $900 at McDonald's and Starbucks a month? I'd love to. And it's something- He would love to. He would love to. There's going to be some reason why he can't do that, but he, yo, he would love to do that. Like I actively okay. have tried to do my whole life. I get that, but at right. this point, it's like not a choice. It's right. really not. I respect that. Um, most addicts would tell you that, you know, <laughs> I, I don't, it's, I'm not making excuses, but it's the reality of the situation, right? It's like going to Eugenia Cooney and saying, you need to put on 50 pounds. Right? Okay. Of course she does. Of course she does. What about accountability? I, it, it's, dude, it's like, it, like he just gets into these like justification spirals where like it just gets worse and worse and worse and like i'm a fat fuck and like i've been fat and like it's you know you just when you need to change things you do change things like when i was broke at when i was at my most broke i did not lose weight but i did change the ways that i spent my money i didn't choose to go get pizza i didn't choose to go out to mcdonald's i would make some fucked up fat shit happen at walmart but i would spend as little money as possible in the process he isn't even willing to do that the people surrounding you i mean they're doing their best you know, what is what is that? Nobody like? can hold your your toes to the fire. Right? I know, but is there enablement? At all? No, the opposite. Right, okay. the opposite. All right, I have people who are like, let me cook healthy meals, cheap meals here. Okay, but I know where McDonald's is, man. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, this show comes. They deliver to your house, right? Like, if, in, a, in a week moment. Well, if they deliver to your house, it's gonna be even more fucking expensive. It's like these financial incentives, like they should mean something at the end of the day, but they just don't seem to mean anything. Like. <sighs> I'm going to choose McDonald's. In this yeah. show, I can do finances. I'm obviously not an addiction person. All I can say on the finances, if we're not willing to change that, then as the title of the video suggests, you're gonna die in poverty. I love how we had the title of the video figured out beforehand, and it is a good title, uh, but yeah, anyway. Like I said, if you don't stop, you, you have to stop. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you stop or you die in poverty.
Because right now it's it's insane. It adds an additional what twenty percent to your budget, fifteen percent to your budget. And we can't even survive in the needs. Yep. It's it's just really no longer a choice. So you're choosing at this point. Even yes, addictive tendencies. I get it, and that is not my thing to talk about. Um, if you choose to do that after this conversation, you you've chosen just giving up and. Just well, like, I mean, after this conversation, I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing for the last 30 to 45 yeah. days, which is work fucking as- up and spending too much money on fast food. I'm sorry. You left it right for me there, Boogie. I'm sorry. I hope you fucking change. It would be sick if you changed. It would be fucking cool. Like, oh, my God. The Boogie turnaround story would be the story of the century. If Boogie could actually figure everything out and turn his life around and get his shit together, lose some weight, get financially stable again, it would be fucking amazing. Amazing. It would be the greatest rise and fall and rise again video on June the King's channel you could ever imagine. Like, it would be sick, but you have to actually do it. You can't just say that you've been doing it and show nothing at all. As much as I humanly possibly can. How many hours a day do you think that I'm is? putting in like a good 40-hour work week now. Okay. Well, I think that when we can't survive, I think that needs to be 60 to 80. Yeah, I, I don't think he's putting in 40 hours a week. Like... Uh, I, like, I'm not going to pretend to be, like, the hardest working person on the planet, but just when I look at Boogie's channel and I see the amount that he's put out, I, I unless he's, like, horrendously slow at editing, and then it's like, yo, go to Skillshare, or don't go to Skillshare because that costs money. Go to, like, YouTube and learn fast editing techniques. Like, it should not take that long to make the content he's making. Yeah, yeah. but that's, that's where I am. And... Like, at, at, at the end of the day... And, like, once again, I am a low-effort content creator. Do not make, like, highly polished content. Yeah, I've made some slightly more try-hard content recently. But, like, I'm pretty quick with editing, and it does not take 40 hours a week to do what Boogie is doing. Again, no excuses. You know, people think I don't want to get a real job. I'm a disabled felon, man. Right? I got, I'm, I'm a disabled felon. <laughs> I want a shirt. Wait, no. Can we get a Boogie2988 shirt that says I'm a disabled felon? I really, like, it's true. It's, like, he's not lying, but it's just all the context around it that makes it, like, so hard to, like, take these words seriously. It's 2005, Mm -hmm. right? I can't work Yeah, the editor on staff. Like, I I don't fucking know, bro. I I can't do physical labor. That's not an option, right? I think I call it home, uh, again, service So now they have to Google that I'm a felon who beats his wife and... Because that's what happens when you Google my name. Mm-hmm. Go do it right now. Yeah, They have to hire that person. Yeah, Th- those, They're not going to. Those are the They're, positions. Okay, I, I saw somebody in the comments here. I'm actually just going to scroll down real quick. This is probably a bad idea, but... Uh... Fuck. Somebody said, oh yeah, I worked at a call center for about a week. First day orientation, we all... Had new hires all sat around in a circle and everyone began to p- tell their prison stories. I was the only one there without a story of prison. Okay, so I don't believe Boogie when he says he's unhirable. I literally sat next to a man that beat the shit out of a cop. So, like, what this person is implying, and it is just an anecdote, but, like, what he's implying is that there are jobs that hire felons. Like, every felon out there is not just unemployable for the rest of their life. There are people that are desperate for employees, and, like... It's not the easiest thing on the planet to find a job and shit, but the fact that he, like, has this preconceived idea that it's just fucked from the get-go, it's just, it's BS. ...wear those more... Uh, ah, what's the word? People with records uh, do tend to find more opportunities. Right, but are they also disabled? Right? Like, uh, like I'm saying, well, this would hopefully be work at home. Right. I'm just giving one option. <clears throat> like, it's always, there's always an answer. Like, Boogie always has an answer for any, like, once somebody explains how so- somebody can achieve thing in one position, he always has a backup excuse. I, I bet you he has, like, five or six layers of backup excuses for, like, every situation he gets pushed into. So that if you beat him on this, oh, yeah, he's, like, got this infinite defense. But, sure, but I'm just saying, like, if that job crosses my lap tomorrow, I'll take it. Have I actively looked it's for it? It's not going to cross your lap, bro. Absolutely. If I just I don't think it exists. Wait, wait. Shall we? Yeah. Okay. Our good friend LinkedIn. Now they're going to LinkedIn. Then, you know, th- this is a wide variety. Well, this is giving this is giving way too many way too much variety. Let me let's just, just do customer service. Cuz I did call center and I was doing like real estate agent was like the fifth one down. Right. Does that make sense? There you go. How to apply to these these billion trillion quadrillion jobs. I have. Yeah, I'm He's applied. He doesn't even look at the phone. He just assumes I've applied to every job you could possibly like. I don't think that I don't think Boogie's done this. Like I I don't. It's not that I. It's just yeah. I don't know. It's it's really hard to believe that Boogie actually went hard in the paint trying to find jobs for a long time. I'm telling you, I've done this exact thing in the you last. Applied year. for all of them. No, I've applied for over a dozen, 
and I oh, kept getting told the nothing. same thing, which is, dude, you're unemployable. Yeah. So even for the people that are very employable, though, yeah. applying for a dozen jobs, you likely won't right. get a single job. I, okay. Like, I had that headhunter. Yeah. Tell me off camera. Mm -hmm. Man, there's nothing we're gonna be able to do for you. I don't think there's anything. You need to focus on the YouTube thing. Okay. Like, I, I, like I, if a headhunter is coming, I don't believe. I also don't believe him when he says that. Like the the that agency that he worked with for that headhunter in the documentary. Like, yeah, they didn't think that they could find employment for him. But he also chose to completely blow that interview. Like, yes, it was like a mock interview or whatever. But like. It's one thing to say, like, oh, this person's going to Google me and they're going to see that I'm a felon and stuff. And then to uh, actually present all of that information. Like, like, let's say that Boogie was just, like, quietly a felon and quietly had all these rumors about him on Reddit. That would be a completely different story than it actually coming out of his mouth all the time. The more that he talks about it, the more impossible this is for him to avoid. That these people aren't going to hire me. I trust her evaluation. No, I get it. I get it. I just, I struggle with the conversation. If we decide it's impossible, then it's, it's impossible regardless. Well, I True. understand that, but um, when, if I, if you told me that I need to start flapping my wings and fly out of here, <laughs> right? We would agree that that's not a possibility. She's probably right that you can't get most desirable jobs, not desirable jobs, anything, any, dude. I was There's no job for this man on the planet. He is the worst, least employable person on the planet is what he wants us to believe. Um, I just don't think that's the case. I don't think that Boogie2988, Stephen Williams of Arkansas, is the least employable person on the planet. There are people, like, like I, I genuinely think that Boogie wants to believe that, like, nobody could possibly be more disadvantaged than him. And I'm not saying that his life is easy. I'm not saying everybody just needs to pull up their bootstraps and solve all their problems on their own. But, like, it... It's He's not in the least employable position. He's not the worst off person on the planet. How desirable is it to cold call teachers about a union and get screamed at by them? Because that's the job I applied for yeah. and got told they wouldn't give it to me. How desirable is that job? Not thrilling. No. And that's that was the most desirable job I applied for. Okay. And they wouldn't offer me that one. And I had a friend in management at that company. So you're not willing to try? Uh, this, am I, trying to, am, I trying, am I willing to try doing something that is clearly not going to happen? No. Uh, now, if I get so, so the, so the, and this is him being defensive. This is not a character. This is not some documentary where he's playing it up. This is a financial advisor trying to help him and him doing all of the defenses that he jokingly did in the documentary. This is why I don't believe Boogie at all anytime he claims to be doing like Andy Kaufman-esque fucking bits because it's not a bit. This is actually how he gets when he's put into a corner. It's not a joke. He actually is this defensive and he actually does try to make this many excuses felony sealed which is going to cost money oh and then but there's the whole like f getting the felony sealed thing which like is obviously an objectively better situation to be in if he can seal the felony and my second year of probation which i think is this year how much will it cost i don't know okay it might thousands be but if i get that sealed this is a whole other conversation. That that might. Be I think he will be right back in the same position though. If he gets this felony sealed, I think he's gonna come up like like I said with the layers of excuses. I think he will come up with more justifications of why it's impossible. Like, oh well, we got the felony sealed, but you still got all those rumors about me on Reddit. I'm still disabled. I'm still mentally having problems. Like, I'm still a YouTuber. I can just make more money on YouTube. I'll just try harder on YouTube. Like, it'll just be the same thing a very worthy investment pulling from the uh the magic the gathering but until march that's not a conversation we can even start uh well march is coming up pretty quick um so i worked uh what was it it's like senior year of college was in between a couple jobs and my dad was like why aren't you working you need to go work this job and it was like this odd jobs all around and it connected people who like needed work right. needed work and the people that i was like moving mattresses with into like newly built uh college apartment complexes right. they were all felons and they were like people who just couldn't get work anywhere else they felons were... have jobs like it's not easy to be a felon in the job market but it's not like every felon just gets out of jail and then immediately starves to death and especially not somebody in boogie's case who didn't even go to jail like he didn't he didn't spend a lot of like maybe he spent like a night I, I don't know exactly how much time boogie was held in some sort of cell but it was not a stay it wasn't a long stay it was offered there was still opportunity that they saw yeah, vanity labor is get. generally pretty lenient on that kind of thing yes. now of course I can't stand that, that was just an example though that's right. just an example though yeah. i'm just saying if we refuse to search for it because we believe it doesn't exist then it's not going to exist right well when i'm getting told by professionals it doesn't exist yeah i listen to the professionals yeah and
<laughs> I, I refuse to believe that there are multiple professionals that have just sat Boogie down and said, nobody will ever give you a job. Like, that's just such a weird, like, it's a weird thing for somebody to even say in an interview setting. Like, who, like, I don't know. It's it's just weird. That, that makes me quiet. Oh, I, I don't know. I, you, I was, yeah. I wasn't there for the conversation. Yeah. I wasn't there for the conversation. It's hard for me to just... And Caleb is completely painted into a corner because he's trying all these different strategies and nothing is working. So he can't actually push it any further because there's no, there's nothing for him to actually get to the core of there's no give on boogie's side whatsoever fully i i don't know i wasn't there i wish you put it in the dock apparently if he spends a couple thousand dollars he can get the felony sealed but he can't do that until march i guess it's his first opportunity to do that but like like i said i'm sure that if he got the felony sealed there will probably be another list of excuses right behind that whether it's the rumors about him online or his disability being honest with you. Okay. i mean we did it says right there management would not give us approval because they wouldn't yes but it's, it, it's all well, there. from there it made it look like because you said well you google me i'm well, a pedophile nice. and i'll tell you my financial plan and it might be a stupid one okay but because I've seen traction in the last 30 to 45 days, mm -hmm. the more I work, the more income I bring in. Yeah, the more that I, the more that I make YouTube videos, the more that I put effort into the editing, the more that I put effort into being an entertainer, the more money I'm making. And that seems to be more valuable than chasing after a dream. Well, the issue with that, the issue with even that is that, like, yes, I think that Boogie should put in more work. I think that he should keep working. He should keep trying to make videos. But the issue with what he's saying is that he had a huge spike that didn't have anything to do with his work actually from the documentary and also a huge spike in revenue because November and December have way higher ad rates for creators and you make way more money. So he might actually just be like thinking that things are getting better when they're actually not that much. Professionals are telling me doesn't exist. Okay. Right. This is viable. Professionals is, are just that one conversation you had. I've talked to several hiring people. Yeah. Okay. I, I, just have to, I just have to trust you on that. I've applied for several jobs in the last year. Doesn't. Uh, roughly. He says several. That is not a good number. Uh, even a dozen is like if somebody is trying really, really, really hard to get a job, you would never stop at a dozen job applications. That's one per month. You know, it's just not. It's not something that somebody who's willing to do anything. It's not where they would stop. Yeah, that's like a half hour work on LinkedIn. Uh, again, when you get shut down by several people doing hiring, mm -hmm. and you get told the same message, including by a headhunter, mm -hmm. "Hey, man, you're a felon." Who has all these terrible rumors about you? Who's going to hire you to be working in your company? Also, you're saying how did they even find out about the rumors? If he's just doing an interview with them, like how are they finding? Like they're really going on to Reddit. I'm actually just going to Google. I'm going to go into an incognito tab. I know I'm stretching out the stream longer than it has to, but uh, one sec. Oh my God! Why am I in? Oh, okay. One sec. New window. Let's hope that this isn't showing on stream. It probably is not. Okay, we're chilling. We're chilling. Sorry, I just have to Google. I'm just going to Google Boogie2988. American YouTuber. We got YouTube. We got Wikipedia. We got Twitter. We've got a Reddit post that has nothing to do with all the rumors about him. We've got his Instagram. We've got his YouTube. We've got his Facebook. We've got his Twitch. We've got his Wicked Tubia page. Um, there's like, it's, I mean, it's like not ideal. His Google search results are not ideal, but they're also not like, it's not like it's screaming at you that this guy is like a massive fucking piece of shit. Like, and even if it did, it's like, these are not like, I don't know. It's, it's like a lot of this shit, a lot of the worst shit about Boogie is rumors. Like, and yeah, if you dug deep enough into it, you could see real big flaws with his personality. But what employer is actually going to, like, care that much to watch a bunch of fucking commentary videos or trust Redditors about what kind of guy Boogie is? Also, you have no education. Also, you have no work history. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't know. You're a CEO. You built a multi-million dollar company. These companies don't see that. I don't know. They're they don't see that. They're not looking for somebody that runs their own business. They're looking for somebody that can make them money. I wasn't. I wasn't saying it just like that. All I'm saying is reframing and resume building, and interview skills. With, with everything you just said, that's against you, except for the felony stuff. But you said the lack of education, lack of uh, work history, and stuff like that. Reframing to what you actually have accomplished, because you have accomplished I've never been a, a lot. Fan of lying, man. That's not lying. I've never been a big fan of lying. This is the best line from the entire interview. I've never been a big fan of lying. Boogie two nine eight eight Stephen Williams. I've never been a big fan of lying. You know, I don't like to frame things in a way where they seem different than they actually are. I like to tell the truth. It's fucking Abraham Lincoln over here. 
you have accomplished a lot. You had a multi. You have a multi-million. Well, I've never business. been a, a. I've never been a fan of going in and, and fudging my resume to make it That's look. That's not fudging either. I don't have an education, but it's because why I I, I chose to learn abroad or something. I was talking like about that, your you know. work skills. You've brought. You've like asked. he's literally like completely so fucking disingenuous about like Caleb wants him to say that he is a CEO that has made millions of dollars on the internet has created multiple successful social media platforms and boogie's like well i don't want to lie it's like no it's just fucking presenting it in a way that sounds good instead of being like oh if you google me you'll see that i beat my wife you know it's just he chooses the worst option every single time and then he's like why are things so bad actually built something successful These companies don't see that as something if you find me a job that pays as much as putting the same hours into my youtube channel yeah. as that i'll take that job yeah, and yeah. i'll do it as well, well i mean you do you do 40 hours a week right yeah but we might need to do 60 to survive which might require 20 somewhere else well it'd be smart to put that 20 hours into the this business the one i'm building that i keep 100 percent instead of keeping five percent if week. boogie was putting 40 hours into youtube a week he would have a video every single day if like like what what the fuck is boogie putting out right now i'm sorry i just have to look at his youtube channel i'm doing this on another monitor because once i get into like multiple tabs on youtube it's kind of a mess um and to be fair video four hours ago video one day ago video two days ago th three days ago he's making like eight minute video six minute video eight minute video 15 minute video eight minute video and a lot of these are like reactions like these are just ramble videos i i don't believe that these are taking him eight hours per day it's just a lot of time for this style of video. And like I said, maybe he's really incompetent with editing, but to me, it it just kind of seems like he might be lying about the amount of work that he's putting in. And Caleb is suggesting that he puts in like 60 hours a week on YouTube. If Boogie was genuinely putting in 60 hours a week on YouTube, I think he would have at least a 10 to 15 minute video coming out every single day maybe multiple videos per day or maybe he puts more time into like deeper videos like i can tell you guys from like the past couple months um when you make longer videos they make more money like they when you put in a lot of time into a video and it's a video that keeps people watching throughout like the the timeline of the video it makes more money than a six minute video it's not even fucking close you, you think that twenty percent will, will, or that twenty hours a week, that extra fifty percent in labor is going to equate to an extra fifty percent in revenue? If yes, then I do it absolutely. I don't. It, it's the problem. math would have to work, right? Right. And I don't think most jobs are going to make that math work. Most twelve dollars an hour jobs, which is minimum wage in Arkansas, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think now. I think it might be less, but I think like to his credit, I do think that the best way for Boogie to make money is to spend his time making YouTube videos. But he just needs to, like, I don't know. He needs to. In my opinion, Boogie needs to get into a serious talk, and I think he already talks with Turkey Tom, but he needs to talk with somebody like Turkey Tom or another successful YouTuber that can advise him on what to do, and then actually fucking take that advice, because there are all these different angles that Boogie could take, where if he was putting out a video like every single day and getting like 30k views per video, he'd be doing pretty fucking well. 12 eventually, right? Brings an extra nine sixty dollars a week, that at least meets us to our minimum. Right. And minimum is better than draining our savings. Yeah. Well, like I said, I'd rather put that hours into my business. Yeah, and, no, and no, no, no. I'm not against that. I'm just right. saying, as long as the value actually, if the math works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Right. Have you uh, worked with any uh, services, by the way? There, uh, I can't speak for Arkansas. I can't speak for the city. There's local services. There's uh, a wide variety of services who focus on the rehabilitation aspect of people's lives. Now, you did not go to prison, but you do have a felony. Sure. That helps to connect felons with workplace opportunities. There are services out there. Have you worked with any of them yet? I'm <laughs> so surprised that Caleb is still pushing him on the job thing. Um, yeah, I know that Turkey Tom gave him advice, but it, it, from what I understand, Boogie still has an, uh, an open line of communication with Turkey Tom. And he, like, you cannot just throw something like that away. Like, Boogie is actually privileged to have people that would be willing to help him. Like, like... Um, whatever you think about Tom, he's extremely successful on this platform and to be able to have like a talk with him about like how to be good on YouTube is invaluable to anybody. He just needs to actually take the advice. Yeah, it's never come across my table. I, again, my, well, no, it's not is, about coming across your table. Well, what about you going across their well, table? Well, my plan is to seal the felony and, and try to move forward. From I, I, the reason that I bring up advice is that, um, is that Boogie... 
Boogie's current strategies on YouTube are, I don't think they're going to do it for him. I don't think that these 16K view videos are going to, because these are not like, I don't know, like, I'm just, and it's even like, even the big topics that he like makes, like, he got 51K views eight days ago. That's fucking good. Um, but he needs to make longer videos. Like, he needs to find something to say, find just a way to, like, I, like, I'm not saying stretch, I'm not saying, like, waste people's time, but he needs to figure out a way to turn these topics that work into longer form videos. Oh my god, I'm playing my own stream. Oops. Uh, anyway. And that happens in, in three months, provided I can afford it. Yeah. So I, I, I because really... like 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 once again, I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but like, the, I don't think the job thing is actually going to work out for Boogie. Um, so he needs to make the YouTube thing work, and like I said, he has like at least three people that are somewhat dependent on him. So this is not just a situation that fucks Boogie over. This is a situation that fucks over at least three other people. Uh, that's so. That was, I've never heard of that before. So I, I don't know if it even exists in my area, but it might. What would they offer? I don't think they'll offer any financial. A lot of things I'm seeing are Texas resources. Again, I can only, I can't speak for that, right. but right. Well, as far as I know, I might not need that in three months. I but if it turns out in three months that I won't be able to get this, then sealed. you'd be willing to. Yeah, of course, sure. Okay. Yeah, of course. Again, it's just if, if math works, dude. If you can bring it in on YouTube, if we can get back to ten thousand bucks a month again, yeah, I'm all yeah. about it. I, I think incredible. The, the biggest mistake I ever made was in 2020 after my nervous breakdown, I stopped working. Yeah. Um, and I, this is I, completely like irrelevant to the situation, but we're, we're diving back into the past again. I should have had all of this money. I still could. And, and I not just 2020 when every other YouTuber, um, went to work, I had to get into intensive therapy and stuff. I <laughs> also fucked up my entire life in 2020, but like, we're here now, you know, like I'm obviously younger and like healthier than Boogie, despite my problems as well. But like, you know, you can fuck up like there's like, you could fuck up plenty of fucking times. And, uh, you know, it's the opportunity is still there. Like, I actually don't think that there's been a better time to try and recapture or capture new success on YouTube. YouTube's algorithm is push pushing small shit way more than it used to. If you have a good video idea, you can make shit work. Mm -hmm. I had to reorganize my brain. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm glad I did it. Don't get me wrong. It was a good use of my time. Um, I came out a different person. Uh, but I, 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 again, I think my biggest answer is I just need to go back to making as many videos as I can considering my, my schedule. Make good videos too. My health. Um, and, and really put my effort into my business. So I, I do concede. I mean, if, if the professionals told you that, I mean, again, if that's what they said, but again, I, I do believe it. They're all telling me it becomes a whole other ball game in March. Yeah. 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 Hire a lawyer, spend a couple thousand dollars, get this completely off my record, no longer shows up in a background check, then all we have to do is deal with the other obstacles. My favorite thing is, is always to punch back against certain mindsets and try to push yeah. people push people to better themselves. So that's, this is what I try. Well, like I said, and to Caleb's credit, I, I saw some people in the chat earlier being like, you know, Caleb has some weird vibes. And I don't know about that. I haven't watched a ton of his content, but I, he's trying here. I, I think he's, he's giving it a fucking shot. And he's also, like, I think he's, he's striking a good balance between, like, you know, keeping Boogie in the room, making sure that he doesn't leave because he feels so insulted. But he's also, he's giving pushback. He's trying, but there's only so much you can do. I'm not giving up hope. If it, yeah, comes, like, yeah. if it comes down to my YouTube channel is no longer making me money anymore, yeah, yeah. and I, I literally have to steal for a living, I'll do it. Well, let's not do that. No, but I would. I, I'm telling you, if I have to steal bread to feed my family, I would be that guy. It's like, yeah. what the fuck is this shit? Like, oh my god, I fucking hate when he says stuff like this. Like, I, I do believe that he would steal, but he won't. He won't get a job. Right. I will do whatever it takes to survive. Right. Now, I will and certainly getting a job like every other human has ever had, or the jobs I've had. I work security. I've worked. I washed dishes at a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. I've worked. Right. I have no problem with working. If the if job fits me and it's going to keep my bills paid, it's going to keep my health insurance so that I don't die. Mm -hmm. Obviously, going to do it, man. Obviously. Um, I think one thing that would help is not pushing someone to get work. And I know there's probably background in a lot of different story. Uh, if your significant other is able to help split the cost of the place they're living, that sure. will help with your thing. I do want to talk about before. We yeah, I, I really do think that like his his girlfriend should try and make money some way. I don't care if it's like making little like like trinkets or like some sort of craft project that you sell on Facebook or whatever. That's totally chill. Uh, but just try and make some money because I think it's good for her to be financially independent on some level. And obviously it's good for the household as well. And like a job might be the move, you know, I, I, I don't know. Like it's. 
It's difficult to say how comfortable she is in her current living situation with Boogie, but eventually that will probably get old. You probably won't want to be in the house all day with Boogie. Um, you know, you might want to get out and do your own thing and earn your own money. It's like, like, there is satisfaction to earning your own money. Wrap it up. Just, you know, okay. Say you make it 10 years, like you said. I hope it's much longer. You know, I really do. Let's just let's just go off that 10, uh, the 15 year arc. Sure. What does that look like to you? We we've done YouTube for 15 years, so we're halfway through that. Through I know. That arc. I, what 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 does what does the next 15 look like? I mean, here's what my life has looked like so far, right? I was almost when I was 20, right? I was crowd surfing. I was breaking in the buildings of the University of Arkansas Statue of Limitations has gone up on that, by the way. But I was sleeping in. I've never heard that story before. I've been watching Boogie for a very long time. I've never heard that story about breaking into buildings at the University of Arkansas to sleep um i have heard the homelessness thing i always like uh from everything that i've gathered from him talking about it it seemed much more like a couch surfing situation than like on the street homelessness but um i'm not i'm not 100 sure and buildings that they were building still i want to hear about your future the right, exciting things on, on, not your we're gonna get there. we're gonna get there okay okay but when i was homeless i wouldn't have told you that three years later i would be running a, a small business running web design right sure um and then later while i was running that business i wouldn't have told you i'd be disabled soon after right and it's so it. weird. Like he's just he's doing the thing right now. We're trying to get him not to do the thing. Caleb's sitting right across from him, trying to get him not to do the thing, and he can't help but like go backwards because he's trying to explain that like, oh, I can turn things around. I've turned things around in the past, but like at the same time, he is trying to garner sympathy by talking about homelessness and going on disability and stuff. Well, I wouldn't have told you I'd be a, a YouTuber who made 1.3 million dollars across a decade. Mm -hmm. right? Plus more sponsorships, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was I, probably closer to like two, I, right? Probably as much as 2.5. Yeah. I would say across everything I've made. What the fuck, man? People make so much off of sponsorships. I'm kind of like, I don't know. There's a lot of sponsors that like they get popular and then they like they have weird things come out or whatever. Um, I've only done like one sponsorship, but apparently he made an extra 1.2 million dollars on sponsorships so that's 2.5 mil over everything that's crazy and caleb's like clapping for him because he wants to like give him his flowers but the truth is it's all it's all fucking gone for close to 2.5 million dollars in two years now. Incredible. right i cannot tell you what the future looks like but i'm always hopeful one of my favorite movies cast away right um just gotta stay alive man that's yeah. it just gotta stay because you never know what the tide could bring in tomorrow i do agree I no that, what about plans well my plan currently right now is i'm taking the day by day Every therapist will tell you this. What you got to do. Yeah. Uh, my current plan. Every is, therapist would tell you that. Mental health expert. Boogie2988. To continue to throw myself in my existing business because my existing business is still profitable. And I'm looking for that next opportunity. I've looked at reselling on whatnot as a, as a possibility. Mm -hmm. I, I've looked at um, trying to find a small business loan and open something in the area. I uh, talked to a friend about doing a, a smash room. Um, smash room. He wants to open like one of those rage rooms where people like break a bunch of things i think it's a horrible idea like i think it's a cool business i might like to go into one of those i got some pent-up frustrations especially after watching shit like this but like boogie he barely knows how to run a youtube channel i don't know why he would like explore a brand new type of business that requires like constantly replenishing items for people to destroy uh, well, employment like i said it, it, it come march it, there might be a job out there that suits me and that suits my needs and i'm still going to look for that all i know is that right now when I get home from this, I go home and I film videos and I live stream and yeah. I do what I can to entertain the audience that I currently have. And when that audience is, is gone, I hope I find a new one. You know, it's another option. I, I don't want this. This is this is more last case. Yeah. We take it, we, we sell the house, have the hundreds of thousands in equity, uh, about $250,000, $300,000 of equity. And then instead of paying 2121 in rent, we get uh -huh. like a one bedroom, pay like 1100 Now, obviously that sucks, that's hard. Obviously, it has to be ground level, but I'll it saves you, you a thousand. I'll do even better. Okay. Um, the plan is to move that out of Northwest Arkansas and get to a place where we can buy a house for fifty thousand dollars. But you said you had to stay there for medical providers. Well, it, it, yeah, it, it involves giving up on that. So you just it involves giving up on his fucking life, like Boogie. Ugh. I he he's not actually willing to be a martyr, but he's so quick to paint himself as this guy i'm willing to sacrifice everything you know if i can give up on my health i'll move out somewhere and we'll have a nice couple i think that's what he's about to say it's just fucking ugh. oh right it involves yeah. on it involves like not necessarily worrying about being near the best possible health care right okay. it'll be a more rural farm a more rural kind of thing right but 
there's no help at rural hospitals. Yeah, so there, so this actually is an option. So then he kind of backtracks and says, like, but there will still be healthcare options. Like, I can do this. Um, but at the same time, like, he needs to be where he is right now. I don't understand. They know what they're doing. Just doesn't need to be cutting edge, right? And oh. you can get a house out in the boonies for 50K in Arkansas. Sure. It, it might be closer to her family. Um, you know, it sucked to be further away from my support structure there. But that is a possibility. The, 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 the Hail Mary play has always been. Okay. Sell the house, hopefully clear 230, 250 after closing fees and everything else, and and then take that money and live off of it at a very reasonable amount. You know, I, I think that if you get out into the small parts of Arkansas, you buy a fifty thousand dollar house, you have a little bit of land. Gives you sixteen thousand dollars a year for the sixteen thousand dollars a year for the remaining fifteen years of his life if he goes with this option. But the issue there is that then his girlfriend will still be left with nothing when he dies. I really don't think that Boogie gets this whole thing of like, it's bad if my girlfriend has like no work experience when I die and also has no nest egg left to live off of. Like, I don't think he actually thinks about it. Like he seems to be, he talks like a guy who's like very in touch with his mortality and, um, and dying, but I don't think he actually thinks about it. I don't think he thinks about how it would affect the people around him, both emotionally, financially, in every way, I don't think he actually thinks about the consequences for them. Fifteen, so that'd be you difficult. can live pretty okay in Arkansas for sixteen thousand dollars a year. It ain't great, but I know people who do it. Uh, it would be difficult, and it'll all be gone at the end when you die. It's yeah. a thousand three hundred eighty-eight. No more nine hundred dollars a month fast food at that point. At this point, yeah, McDonald's becomes the treat at that point for sure. It, but at this point, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the hell Mary play. So I'm rooting for you, yeah. not because. You're a YouTuber, not because you're sitting across the table from me, not because of history or because you're on the show, whatever. I'm rooting for you because you're a human being who exists on this planet. I'm rooting for you. I'm wishing you the best of luck, man. I, I'll be honest, I'm, I am scared. Me too. Like, yeah. this is, uh, Caleb actually describes how I feel about the situation as well. Like, all of the things about Boogie, he's a person. You know, he's got people around him. It would be nice if things went well for him. And also, just, it would be an incredible story. This guy that keeps fucking up over and over and over again and keeps getting in his own way like if he could just fucking make it work it would be so sad. i don't think it's gonna happen but it would be so sick um i really hope you follow some of the pointers we talked about today oh, I'll tell you, the, the first thing i do is the first thing i do is pay off these high interest debts yeah, i never take out another one <laughs> never and i had no and again the thing i learned from you here today is how bad these were i had no clue that they were as bad as they were that's what i do yeah uh, but all he had to do was look into it. Like, I'm glad that Boogie sat down with Caleb for this, but, like, this needs to be a wake-up call to, like, actually pay attention to things. Like, there are so many things throughout this entire finance arc that's been going on for the past few years with Boogie that he's just ballparking. He's just guessing at. He's giving his best approximation, and that's just not enough. You can't live like that. You need to know. Like, there's a point where you need to actually know. And yeah, IRS and then more self-employment income or setting aside some money for taxes. I don't think your tax bill is going to be extraordinary, but uh, no, it'll probably be about another two or three thousand this year. Yeah. It should be reasonable. It should be reasonable. Potentially selling the house. Oh, jeez. Yeah, really, it's an income question and what you're not just willing to do, but what you're able to do as well yeah. because of physical things and because of your background. And you're right, the internet search, that's the killer. That's the killer. The, yeah. the felony you can steal, the internet search, it's impossible. Never goes away. So just have to hopefully... Hired by someone who doesn't know how to use the internet. <laughs> well, the goal is to uh, and, and the internet stuff. Like it's bad, but I don't know actually how bad it is because I don't know how much employers trust YouTubers and redditors for their information on a person. Yeah, there might be words out there, but there's also like a lot of jobs where like your reputation online is not like actually relevant like all these anonymous call center jobs like i don't know if they care about you being a good person i think they just want warm bodies in that fucking room again the headhunters i've talked to the, the employers that i've talked to yeah. it comes down to finding someone who doesn't care and we talked about yeah. that when it comes to like like i actually worked at a call center for a little while and they would pay um they would pay their employees like i think it was like a thousand dollars if they could recruit another person and they would be there for like four weeks it wasn't like an mlm or anything it was like a real travel company but this call center job sucked ass so they would incentivize people to recruit other people and like get them in to work because the turnover was so fast so there's a lot of jobs like that where they're like willing to do weird shit to get people in the door because the job's 
suck so much. So they'd definitely be willing to take a guy who has some rumors online about him. Hire felons and people hire whatever, right? The, we are second chance employers, right? Yes. And they yes. look at the situation and you just got to find that one sympathetic person. That's why I've never given up on finding a job, right? They, they keep telling me how impossible it is. Why'd you only do 12 applications this year so far, man? Everybody told me, wait till the felony is sealed. Wait okay, till the felony okay. is sealed. Gotcha. Right? Like imagine you apply for a place right now and the felony's on there and now they're aware of you and now you apply six months from now. They remember you're a felon, right? Let's do it in six months when the felony's gone and they never even have to know I was a felon, right? Now all we have to do is find somebody who can deal with my disability and can deal with the fact that they Google my name, they see a bunch of rumors. And that's the killer. That's mm -hmm. the killer. They're only rumors because they're not true, right? And you just gotta find- Yeah, and so why would they trust people on the internet anyway? And the person that understands that. So I, I, don't, I don't lose hope that that person exists. Please don't lose hope. Yeah. Please don't lose hope across this entire thing. That's gonna be what drives you forward. Let's just do one more guess, just one more thing. Across all your investments, not the house, but all everything else you own, sure, you can survive nine months. Nine months, and the party's over. And think about, think about this positively, because this is how I'm thinking about it. Every okay, day. I get nine months to try to find a work groove that gets this income up, that that deals with my my physical restraints, that deals with you know my mental health issues, that I that I can find the right groove to bring in this income before we have to sell the house. How many people walk in here that don't have a nine month grace period? I'm so blessed to have a nine month grace period to figure this one out. Do you have any final thoughts, any final anything? You know, I looked into what you're doing here and you're clearly a very entertaining person, but at the end of the day, uh, I, I learned a lot here today. Good. And uh, I, I think this, I definitely think you're doing a very good thing for people here. Uh, you know, uh, you're doing it in a very entertaining way. I'm just and, me. <laughs> and I mean, you know, maybe we butted heads a little bit during this thing yeah. and that's okay. Um, but I think, I, I think what you're doing here is much needed. I, I think the system is, is designed to take advantage of people and not to make myself to be a victim because I don't think it may, took advantage of me. I just not not to make no. Oh, Boogie two nine. I would never claim to be a victim in any way. I'm just go, oh, man. Yeah, no, not a victim, not disadvantaged. I mean, it's a bad choices, right? But I think there's a lot of people out there who don't have access to this knowledge. They don't have access to this information and what you're doing here really helps people like that. And, uh, I'm, I'm glad you do it, man. I'm really glad. I'm glad to be part of it. I appreciate that. That's cool. I appreciate that. And we've got an official, official knowledge now that Boogie did not buy a Tesla. He didn't buy the Tesla. Okay, so that's pretty much the entire thing. I do have some closing thoughts. Um, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to make a video on this or not. I feel like we covered a lot here. And I feel like there's like, I don't know, maybe I will. Maybe I'll hone in on some things that were specifically bothersome to me. But I think the big takeaway from this is that Boogie has always had this thing of like knowing the right thing to say in certain situations. And I think that that has sort of worn off. Like not only does what he say like conflict with what he actually does and that bothers people and he's gone through enough cycles of that to tr make people hey i don't i should not fucking trust what this guy says at all but he's he's had this history of saying the right things for so long that people are just fucking tired as shit of it and um and yeah i think it's it's all wearing off like he doesn't even like, like I say knowing the right thing to say, he does not even know the right thing to say. He doesn't even know what people want to hear anymore. He's not doing a good job of this. And it's probably just going to continue to, uh, to get more difficult. But we'll see what happens. You know, Caleb, uh, suggested that he might have nine months left of, uh of living this sort of lifestyle before everything comes falling down. So, uh... I honestly, just to keep watching the show, the Boogie 2988 show, I hope he turns it around to be able to, uh, um, stabilize things a little bit. And, uh, for the sake of all the people that rely on him, um, anyway, I'm fucking, <laughs> this was a lot easier with you guys. Like, watching this solo was fucking brutal. Um, so I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, and uh, I think I'm gonna hit the gym. I did have COVID recently, so that's why there were, like, no videos, and I haven't been to the gym in a while, but, uh, that just means I get to hit chest today. So, uh, guys, take care of yourselves. Like, whatever's going on in your life, it's probably fucked up. Like, who knows? Things could be absolute fucking shit, but, like, try. Just try. Just give it a shot. And don't tell people things about what you're going to do don't like g make up all these stories just like come up with here's the plan here's what i'm gonna just start doing something just start 
doing things and believe that you can turn it around in some way because it's better like the, the alternative is just giving up and being fucked and getting worsely fucked so give it a shot drink a lot of water skate on to the best of your abilities i don't even know where my end stream button is but i'll see y'all soon peace out thank you so much everybody oh shit